back program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, the new year was ushered in by one of the nation's gridiron classics played in the Rose Bowl before a record crowd of 93,000 people. This game always produces statistics that are mulled over by sports lovers for weeks to come. 475 yards gained by running. 314 yards by passing, resulting in seven touchdowns and seven conversions. Yes, even the star of our show has been stunned at the amazing figures compiled by this football classic. 93,000 people at $5 a piece. <laughs> God! What a game. Uh, uh, it certainly was, Jack. <laughs> it seems that the Rose Bowl game gets more exciting every year. You're not kidding. I can remember when it was only 80,000 people at $3 a piece. <laughs> but I will say one thing, Don. You've got to give the California Chamber of Commerce a lot of credit. They sure think fast. What do you mean, Jack? Well, during the half, they had a man climb up a ladder and paint a stem on the USC score so it would look like an orange. <laughs> Three thousand people. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hello, Don. Hello, Mary. I'm glad you're feeling better. Yes, Mary. It's certainly good to have you back on the show. Well, Jack, I hated to miss last Sunday's program, but I had that thing that's been going around. Virus X. Yes, yes, I know. Did you have a good doctor, Mary? Oh, Don, I must tell you about him. He's a new doctor in Beverly Hills, and he's the handsomest man you ever saw. Oh, Gee, he's cute. And he's a bachelor, too. Really? All the girls in my neighborhood came over and asked me to throw germs on them. <laughs> oh, Mary, you fall for everybody. When you first got a fever, why didn't you send for my doctor? I did, Jack, and a fine doctor you've got. What? Jack, how long has he been treating you? Oh, for quite a while. Well, I've got news for you. He's a horse doctor. <laughs> he is not a horse doctor. He isn't, eh? When he got to my house, he threw a blanket over me and walked me around the room to cool me off. <laughs> what? And when he started to braid my hair, I threw him out. <laughs> oh, well, then that explains it. One day I called him up and told him my ankles hurt, and he sent over four bandages. <laughs> Well, Mary, what about the new doctor you called? What did he say? He told me I had virus X and I shouldn't run tomorrow. <laughs> oh, Mary, stop kidding, will you? You know, you, you should be, just be happy that you're well again. I am. And, Jack, I thought it was awfully nice of Alice Faye to take my place last Sunday. It certainly was, Mary, and she was just marvelous on the show. She did a terrific job. Well, she did, eh? <laughs> Yes, she did. And I was amazed how she could come in here at the last minute, pick up the script with no rehearsal, and give such a sensational performance. Is it true that she bleaches her hair? <laughs> Mary! Now, stop being catty. There's no way to start the new year. Oh, by the way, Jack, have you made any New Year's resolutions? No, no, I haven't, Don. Well, I have. I made a resolution to cut my food in half. Well, good, good. I'm glad to hear that, Don. It isn't good manners to take a whole steak and stuff it in your mouth. <laughs> no, 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 Jack. I, I'm serious about losing weight. Really? I've given up bread, butter, and potatoes. Don, if you ever stop eating potatoes, Idaho will secede from the Union. <laughs> Mary, I'm certainly glad that you're well enough to attend my New Year's Eve party. Well, so am I, Dan. I had such a good time. But I haven't had a chance to tell you what happened after Jack and I left your house. Mary. What happened, Mary? Tell me. Well. Mary, it's all over. Forget about it. I will not. Oh. John, it was after midnight, and as you remember, we were still at your house having a wonderful time. <laughs> Gee, you know, Mary, this is the best New Year's Eve party I've ever been to. Me too. But it's way past midnight. How about taking me home? Okay, Mary, sure. Well, I say goodbye. Goodbye, Don. It was a wonderful party. Glad you enjoyed it. So long, Jack. Goodbye, Mrs. Wilson. Goodbye, Jack. Now, let's see. Where's Phil? You're standing on him. <laughs> 
How do you like that? Well, it's Don's fault. He shouldn't let him drink so much. What do you mean, Don's fault? Phil was this way when he got here. He was not. <laughs> Mary, when Phil arrived, I opened the door and he fell in like a body in a murder mystery. <laughs> now, come on, let's go. Gee, Mary, isn't this a nice night out? Well, it sure is. What a beautiful sky. You know, the stars look so close and they seem to be different colors. Red, pink, blue, yellow. Jack, that's confetti on your glasses. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, Mary, it was certainly a wonderful New Year's Eve party. Gee, we sure had a lot Pardon of... me, folks. Pardon me. Huh? Now, what do you think I ought to get my wife for Christmas? <laughs> Christmas? Christmas? Mr. Christmas was a whole week ago. This is New Year's. You mean it's already 1945? <laughs> it's 1948. Oh, my goodness. I better get home. <laughs> Everybody celebrates in his own way. Say, Mary, did you notice at the party when the New Year came in, everybody got sentimental and they quieted down? Huh? Well, what do you mean they got sentimental? Well, they stopped singing and dancing. Well, they had to. The stroke of 12, Patrilla came in and shut off the phonograph. <laughs> oh, is that who it was? Well, here's your house, Mary. Yeah. Mary. What is it, Jack? Well, since this is the New Year, how about giving me a little kiss? Oh, Jack, let's not go through that again. You always get so emotional. I do not. You do, too. The last time I kissed you, you ran home, threw yourself across the bed, and cried for an hour. <laughs> well, that was my own fault. I had two glasses of cooking sherry. <laughs> anyway. Well, good night, Jack, and Happy New Year. Good night, Mary. Hey, wait a minute. How would you like to go to the Rose Bowl game? Hey, that would be wonderful. But have you got tickets? There's plenty of time. The game doesn't start till tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> tomorrow? It's already 2 o'clock in the morning. Ah, don't worry about it. I'll get the tickets. Come on, let's go in your house. I want to use your phone. That's an old excuse, but I'll take a chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't be silly. Let's see, who can I... Well, I'll be darned. There's the blanket. You weren't kidding about my doctor, were you? <laughs> Who can I get tickets from? Oh, I know. I'll call Jeff Cravath, the USC coach. The USC coach? But Jackie may be asleep. What do you mean asleep? He hasn't slept since the Notre Dame game. <laughs> oh, I know who'll let me have his extra tickets if he has any. Who? Ronald Coleman. Oh, Jack, you wouldn't call Mr. Coleman at this hour. Why not? This is New Year's Eve. Hand me the phone. Hey, yeah, da dee da dum da dum da dee da dum yippee the Ronald Coleman residence, Sherwood the butler speaking. Oh, Sherwood, this is Mr. Benny. May I speak to Mr. Coleman? Mr. Coleman is asleep, sir. Asleep already? Didn't he celebrate New Year's Eve? Oh, yes. We had a rip-roaring time here till almost nine o'clock. <laughs> nine o'clock? How could you celebrate the New Year that early? We're on London time, you know. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes. Well, Sherwood, do you know if Mr. Coleman has any extra tickets to the Rose Bowl? Oh, I'm sure he hasn't any. Oh. Well, in that case, Sherwood, I'm sorry I woke you up, but I do want to take this opportunity to wish you a happy new year, and that 1948 will be a year that you and yours will enjoy not only health and happiness... I say, old chap, would you mind saying goodbye? There's a draft blowing up my nightshirt. <laughs> Goodbye, Sherwood. Goodbye. Well, have any luck, Jack? No, the Coleman's didn't have any extra tickets, but they have cross ventilation. What? Don't worry, Mary. I'll get the tickets if I have. Hey, Mary, look out the window. Look who's passing. My pal, my buddy. Open the window, quick. Hey, Norman, Norman, have you got two extra tickets to the Rose Bowl game? <laughs> Well, Jack, it's way after 2.30. I'm going to bed. Wait a minute, Mary. I just thought of something. For the Rose Bowl game, they always put about 6,000 tickets on public sale. 
All we have to do is go down and buy them at the box office. But, Jack, there'll be a million people there. All right, so look how early we'll be. I'll call Rochester, have him pick us up in my car, and take us out to Pasadena. Uh, do you think your car will make this hill, Jack? Sure. Rochester, give it a little more gas. Okay. We made it, Mary. You can hop in now. <laughs> Why don't you get rid of this thing and buy a new one? Mary, how can you suggest such a thing? I couldn't get rid of this car. It's like an old friend. It's been with me through thick and thin, through rain and shine, through joy and sorrow. Through McKinley and Truman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seriously, Jack, maybe you can get a new car through Fred Allen. You know, he's changing sponsors this week, and he's going on the air for Ford. Mary, I wouldn't ask Fred Allen a favor for anything. Why, if I were stranded on some foreign island, hungry, and Allen came with, to me with food, I'd rather starve than accept a favor from him. How can you say that? A month ago, you sold him Christmas cards. That's business. <laughs> hey, Rochester, turn to the right on Camden Drive. I know a shortcut to Pasadena. Okay. <laughs> Gee, Mary, I hope we can get tickets. I wouldn't miss this game for anything in the world. It's going to be... Oh, Jack, look at that poor old man. Where? Oh, yes. Look at that old man hobbling along on the sidewalk. That's a shame. Why well, feel sorry for him? He's going faster than we are. <laughs> Never mind. Stop the car. <laughs> Say, mister, would you like a lift? Eh? Hey. I said, would you like a lift? Where are you going? Oh, I'm going to Pasadena, to the Rosie Bowl. Oh, you're going to see the game? See it. I'm playing halfback for USC. <laughs> oh, well, you don't have to be there until 2 o'clock. <laughs> Drive on, Rochester. Say, Mary, the reason I'm so anxious to see this game, I don't know if I told you or not, but uh, I bet on USC. You did? Yeah, did I get a sucker. He took Michigan and gave me 40 points. <laughs> you know, that's a sure thing. Hey, Rochester, slow down. There's a parking lot. What does the sign say, Mary? Uh, park here for the Rose Bowl, one dollar. What? A dollar? Why, of all the profiteering rackets. One dollar. That's outrageous. That's the most... Boss, boss, that's your own house. <laughs> oh, yes. Gee, 15 cars already. <laughs> it's only four o'clock in the morning. Now, Rochester, let's get to Pasadena as fast as we can. I don't want to miss getting those Rose Bowl tickets. Say, Jack, look, we left Phil at Don's house, and there he is walking toward us. Well, I'll be darned. Rochester, stop the car. Hey, Phil! Phil! Hiya, Jackson. Phil, do you know what condition you were in when I left Don's? Yeah, Jackson, I felt awful. It's the first time I ever passed out after the first glass. After the first glass? I'm going to say, what were you drinking? Milk. <laughs> milk? Yeah, some wise guy turned out the lights and handed it to me. <laughs> Phil, milk is good for you when you're drinking. It neutralizes the alcohol. It makes you feel good the next morning. Go on, Daddy. Now tell me about the birds and the bees. <laughs> Phil, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Ashamed of what? So I've been having a little fun for the last two nights. Last two nights? Everybody else has a party on New Year's Eve, but you have to start your party the night before. So what? Henry Wallace started his party the night before that. Ha, <laughs> 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 Oh, Harris, that nasty old milk ain't slowed you down a bit. <laughs> oh, brother. Say, Phil, I don't think you should be walking around like this. Why don't you get in the car and let us drive you home? Oh, no, I feel fine now. I'll get home all right. Hey, Jackson, when did you get this brand new car? What? You better help me, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Now, look, you don't have to help me. I'm going to walk home. But, Phil, when you go out, doesn't Alice worry about you? Oh, sure. That's why she sold this note to my lapel. No, let me see that. What does it say, Mary? To whom it may concern. If lost, remove ropes from coat pockets, stand them up in time to a lamp post. <laughs> oh, well, and he's all right. So long, Phil. I'll be seeing you Sunday. Okay, Happy New Year, Jackson. Happy New Year. Now, hurry up, Rochester. I want to be sure and get those tickets. <laughs> Gee, standing here so long. What a crowd. Yeah. Here it is almost noon, and we've been standing in this ticket line for five hours. Yeah. And the line doesn't seem to... Hey, you back there, stop shoving. wonder how long it'll be before we... I said stop shoving! <laughs> yeah, I can't understand, Mary. People go to football games, it brings out the worst in them. Look, I warned you twice. And if you shove me once more, I'll drag you out of line and I I'll... I can't help it, mister. People are pushing me. <laughs> I don't care. Jack, control yourself. Well, lucky for her, she's wearing glasses. <laughs> Darn it, this line doesn't seem to move up at all. Boy, I sure hope we can get tickets. I'm so anxious to see the games. Hey, bud. Bud. Huh? You say you want to get some tickets? You say you want to see the game? Tell you what I'm going to do. What? I ain't got a pair of tickets smack on the 50-yard line. And you can have them for only 75 bucks. Get <laughs> 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 him on the back, mister. He's choking on that hot dog. Look, mister, you got a nerve. Charming $75 for a pair of football tickets. Why, that ain't nothing. Why, there's a crook out in Beverly Hills charging a buck to park cars. <laughs> That's beside the point. You came here... Hey, you back there, I warned you three times to stop shoving. If you don't, I'll... You what? Gee, somebody must have taken her place. <laughs> I took her place. I'm her husband. Well, congratulations. She's a lovely girl. <laughs> now, where's that um, wise guy that was trying to sell me those? He's gone. Oh, yes. You know, Mary, it's a shame. Dennis wanted to see this game today, but he's got a bad cold, too, and he had to stay in bed. Gee, more people have been... Jack, Jack, move up. You're next at the ticket window. Oh, yes, yes. yes. All right, mister. How many tickets do you want? Uh, how much, uh, how much are they? Five dollars and fifty cents. Well, uh, here's my money, Jack. No, 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 Mary. No, no, I'll, I'll pay for these. I'll buy my own. I've still got money left from the May Company. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, one ticket, Mister. Here you are. Uh, give me a ticket right next to hers, will you? Yeah, they they're right together. And boy, are you too lucky. Those were the last tickets. Come on, Mary. Come on. Let's get out of here. Boy, we are lucky. I had my heart set all year on seeing this game, and I'm going to see it now. Come on, Mary. We're over at Tunnel 16. Okay. You know, it's kind of chilly. I want to get a cup of coffee first. You want one, Mary? No, I don't want to get mixed up in that crowd. I'll go ahead and hold our seat. Okay. See you in a few minutes, Mary. I don't let him start the game without me. Let's see. Where can I get the coffee? Well, there's a stand over there. Yeah, da dee da dum da dee da dee da dee da dee. Gee, I can't wait. Boy, it was a whole night. Stood in line for five hours. It was worth it to get this ticket. Ah, uh, dee da dee da dum da dee da dee da dee. Hey, Mister. Mister. Huh? How many tickets you got to the game? One. What'd you pay for it? Five fifty. Want to sell it? Oh, no. oh no, no, sirree, not me. I don't... I'll give you six dollars for it. Well, are you crazy? I've been looking forward to this game all year. I've been up all night calling people, begging people for these tickets. I drove all the way down here from Beverly Hills in that traffic. I waited in line five hours to get this ticket. Seven dollars. It's guys like you that always try. <laughs> How, 
much? Seven bucks. Seven dollars? Yep. <laughs> Mister, do me a favor, will you? What? There'll be a girl sitting next to you. <laughs> Tell her you picked my pocket. <laughs> Okay. Here's your money. Thanks. So long, mister. Gee, I hate to miss that game. But then again, with this money, I can... Wait a minute. What kind of a $5 bill did he give me? Look at the picture on it. Madman Month. <laughs> hey, mister! Mister, come back! Come back here! Hey, mister, come back here! Come back! Well, anyway, Don, now you know why I'll never go to another football game with Jack. Well, I don't blame you, Mary. That's smart. Guy stole me the ticket. I'd like to see him again. I'll tell him plenty. Well, drop in to Sarah's tonight, and you can. How do you know he's going to be there? I've got a date with him. You would. <laughs> Good night. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, in just a few hours, the Jack Benny Troop will board a train for Denver, Colorado, where they're going to open the March of Dimes campaign. Trips like this require a lot of preparation. So let's go to Jack Benny's house in Beverly Hills, where we find Jack and Rochester packing. Gee, Rochester, I'm all excited about this trip. Me too, boss. You know, it's pretty cold in Denver this time of year. It sure is. Do you want to take your long ones or your short ones? Well, i better take the long ones. The sideburns will keep my ears warm. <laughs> now, um, let's see. Have you all my clothes packed? I think so. One pair of pajamas, one set of underwear, one pair of socks, one shirt, one handkerchief, and six boxes of does. That does is wonderful. It does everything, you know. No, it don't. The little Rochester has to do the ironing. <laughs> well, Rochester, I like you to take care of my laundry personally because you do it better than anybody, you know. Well, that reminds me, boss. When you get back from Denver, you better buy another, uh, an extra Bendix. But, Rochester, why do we need an extra washer? The day after a baby came, down the shore signed up for our diaper service. <laughs> Oh, good, good. That reminds me, I better send an application blank to Shirley Temple. <laughs> On second thought, I'll let Naps take over while I'm gone. Now, Rochester, did you notify everyone that we're leaving town for a week? Yes, sir. I had them shut off the gas, the water, the phone, and the lights. And what'd you do about the milk? I sent the cow away to a rest farm. <laughs> That's fine. She ought to be loaded when we come back. <laughs> Now, Rochester, finish packing because we don't want to miss the train. Yes, sir. You know, Rochester, every time I take a train trip, it brings back such memories. It was just about ten years ago on a train when I, that I first met you. Uh -huh. You were a porter. I remember when we arrived in Los Angeles, you helped me out with my coat and whisked all the dust off me. Uh -huh. Then you picked up my bags, carried them all the way through the station and out to the taxi cab. That was ten years ago. Now, if you'll give me my tip, I'll go home to my family. <laughs> Rochester, stop kidding. You know you like this job, and you've been very happy with me because... See what that is, Rochester. I'll finish packing. Yes, sir. <laughs> I sure like to tease the boy. He takes everything so serious. If he only knew, I wouldn't leave him for $100 a week. Not for $200. Not for $300. $300? Get behind me, Satan. <laughs> Coming, coming! 
Hello, Rochester. Hello, Miss Livingston. Come in. Has Mr. Benny finished packing yet? Oh, uh-huh. he's got a suitcase full of clothes and a trunk full of vitamin pills. A trunk full of vitamin pills? With so many germs in the air, Mr. Benny's taking along his own iron curtain. <laughs> oh, where is he now? Uh, he's in the room. You can go on in. Okay. Hey, Rochester. I... Oh, it's you, Mary. I'll be with you in a second. I just want to pack my tuxedo. Oh, Jack, you're not going to take that tuxedo. It's got a moth hole in it. Oh, nobody will notice the moth hole. I'll stick a flower in it. But, Jack, when you sit down, you'll smash it. <laughs> oh. Well, then I, I just won't sit down. Don't bend over, either. You'll look like Ramona. <laughs> Ramona? Yeah, I guess you're right. Remley would be following me around playing his guitar, huh? <laughs> Now, let's see. Jack, why are you taking a tuxedo to Colorado anyway? Mary, we're going to Denver for the opening of the March of Dimes. The governor will be there. I'll probably make a speech. See, last time I was at the March of Dimes campaign, I talked for two hours. You talked for three hours, but you had to give him the dime anyway. <laughs> Mary, now stop with those jokes. i got to finish packing. Now, let's see. What else should I say? Ramona, da dee da dee dum dee da dum Jack, Jack. Ramona, da dee da dee da dee da Jack. Huh? Look in the other room on your dresser. Isn't that cute? What? Rochester put a rose between your teeth. <laughs> teeth? What's the matter with your eyes? Those are two white combs. Say, Mary, are you all packed? Yes, I send everything ahead to the station. I hope they're careful with my skis. Oh, you go skiing up there? Oh, sure. That's wonderful skiing country. You ought to try it too, Jack. Nah, I tried to ski once. My feet went out from under me and I fell flat on my face. Well, there's an answer to that, but I gave it to Judy Canova. <laughs> well, I'm glad you gave it to somebody. Now, let's see. Well, I think I've got everything I'll need. Oh, boss! What is it, Rochester? Don't forget your comb. You may have steak on the train. <laughs> else do I have to do? Oh, yeah, I want to go down to my vault and take out some money. Take out some money? Yeah. Can I watch, Daddy? No, no, I'll be right back. goes there? Friend or foe? Friend. What's the password? Oh, it's you, Mr. Ben. <laughs> That's right. How are you, Ed? Fine, fine. How are things on the outside? Oh, not so good. There have been thousands of cases of Virus X in Los Angeles. Hmm, I've never heard of that before. Virus X? No, Los Angeles. <laughs> oh, well, Los Angeles is a city that's been built since you've come down here. Don't you remember, Ed, when I first brought you out here, that little adobe hut down near the plaza? Yes, yes. Well, that's now renting for $4,000 a month. <laughs> of course, Ed, Los Angeles is a big city now. It's the home of over 3 million men and women. Men and what? Women. Women? Squaws. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm leaving town. I need a little money, Ed. I'm going to open the safe now. Shall I gouge out my eyes? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, Ed, I, I trust you. Now, let's see. The combination is right to 45. Left to 160. Back to 15. Then left to 110. There. There. Give me your hand, Ed. I'll help you up. It's my own fault. I shouldn't have stood so close to it. Yeah. Now, let's see. I'll be in Denver a week. There. That ought to be enough money. Well, see you later, Ed. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, Mr. Benny. Yes? Do you mind if I shave? I'm stepping on it. <laughs> oh, why bother? You'll only have to buy clothes. You know? So long, Ed. <laughs> Oh, 
Jack, did you take enough money? Well, sure, Mary. Now all I have to do oh, is... Oh, Mr. Livingston. Oh, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. Good to see you again, kid. We missed you last week. We sure did. How do you feel, Dennis? All right, but I sure am tired. I pushed my car all the way over here from my home in Van Nuys. You pushed your car? Why? The motor's broken and it wouldn't wa- run. Well, if your car doesn't run, why don't you leave it in Van Nuys? Then I wouldn't have any way to get home. <laughs> uh, you take him, Jack. I lost my round. Did everybody in the cast was sorry that you were sick last week. Boy, did I feel awful. I had a temperature of 102. A hundred and two, eh? I know what you went through, Dennis. You know, I was sick, too. How much temperature did you have? A hundred and one. Ha! <laughs> Dennis, stop being silly. Oh, by the way, Mr. Benny, I want to thank you for sending your doctor over to see me when I was sick. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack. Are you still sending that horse doctor to people? No, I wish you'd stop talking like that about Dr. Nelson. He's not a horse doctor. He is a horse doctor. He is not. He cured Dennis. Didn't he, kid? Yeah. Well, I've got to go now. It's time to eat my oats. <laughs> now, cut that out. Dennis, how long were you sick? For over a week. My father had to stay home and take care of me. Your father? Dennis, why didn't you have a nurse? With a temperature of 102, I didn't trust myself. <laughs> hey, look, Dennis, we better stop this talking and hurry. The train leaves for Denver at 7 o'clock. Well, oh, by the way, Mr. Benny, how many weeks are you going to stay in Denver? One. Ha! Oh. <laughs> Mary, it's your round again. Oh, no, Jack. You can have him. I don't want him. He's too much for me. I'm not going to take any chances. Dennis, have you got a song prepared for the broadcast? Yes, but my doctor told me not to sing. I have laryngitis. Well, Dennis, you have laryngitis. Why aren't you whispering? Why, it's no secret. <laughs> I didn't mean that. You know, Dennis, when I was sick, the doctor came to see me twice a day. How, how often did he come to see you? Once. Ha! <laughs> That's telling them, Mary. Well, look, Dennis, we got a lot of things to do, so you better run along. Okay, see you later, Mr. Benny. What a kid. Say, Mary, you ready to go to the station? Yes, Jack, and the taxi's waiting out front. Good, good. Come on, let's go. Rochester left already with my baggage. Well, Jack, we're almost there. You can see the Union Station up ahead. Yeah. You know, Mary, it's so much better coming down in a taxi. They can take you right down to the main metro. <laughs> Okay, folks, you can get out here. Get out here? But, driver, we're a block away. Why don't you take us right to the station? Oh, no, I... I never take anybody to the station. Why? I can't stand saying goodbye. (laughs) Driver. Driver, stop with that nonsense and take us to the station. Imagine a taxi driver being so sentimental. Can't say goodbye. Yes. How can a whoops a dollar sixty? <laughs> See, I didn't think we lived that far from the. Okay, folks, here you are at the Union Station. That'll be a dollar sixty. Now, here's your money. Come on, Mary. So long, driver. Goodbye, Mister. Take care of yourself. Have a nice trip. Oh, for heaven's sake. Come on, Mary. Let's go. Goodbye, lady. Have a nice time. Take care of yourself. I will. I don't know why people have to go away. I knew this was going to happen. I didn't want to come to the station, but he made me do it. He made me do it. <laughs> I I never saw such an emotional taxi driver, you know. Oh, well, I'm glad he's gone. Now, let's see. Oh, boss, boss! Oh, there's Rochester with all my bags. Rochester, you sure you didn't forget anything? Oh, no, boss. Everything's here. One trunk, one valise, a violin, a double bag, and a birdcage. Birdcage? Ah, <laughs> uh, hello, Polly. Hello. <laughs> Jack, you mean you're taking your parrot along to Denver? Well, Mary, I think I should. I'm taking her on this trip to forget. Forget? Yeah. That carrier pigeon, you know, she, she was in love with was transferred to the Mediterranean. <laughs> she seems so... There's just one place for me near you. <laughs> forget it, Polly. He'll be back. 
Um, <laughs> come on, uh, come on, Mary. Let's uh, let's get in the station. Train leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Cape Cananga. Yeah, I'm glad we got here early. Yeah, but I feel so silly, Jack. You have to carry that parrot. Well... Attention, please. Attention. All passengers going to Anaheim, Mazusa, and Cucamonga, please validate your smudge pots. <laughs> Come on, Mary. Let's see if we can find the... Oh, fella. oh there you are, mister. I've been looking all over for you. Wait, you're the taxi driver. I thought you left. I had to come back. Have a nice trip. Take care of yourself. And don't forget to write. You know, he does hate to say goodbye, doesn't he? Goodbye, mister. Goodbye, lady. Oh, why do people have to go away? Come on. Mary. Mary, let's get out of here, will you? People are looking at us. Silly guy. Now, look, I got our reservations for the Pullman, but I better go over and get the tickets. There's just one place for me near you. Quiet, Polly. Quiet. Oh, look, Jack, there's Phil. Where? Oh, yeah. Hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. I thought I... Well, hello, Polly. Hello. <laughs> Phil, stop breathing on me. What are you doing here at the station anyway? I thought you were taking a later train. Well, I am. I just came down early to check some of my luggage, but i still got some more packing to do. Oh. Well, by the way, Phil, it might be pretty cold in Denver. Is your coat checked? Uh, yeah, I... Ask me that again, will you, Jackson? I said, is your coat checked? No, it's blue serge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harris, it's too bad you ain't president, so you could be on all four networks. <laughs> Phil, the only chance you'd ever have Pardon be... me, aren't you Phil Harris? Oh, I sure am, honey. You better take a good look while you can because I'm going to be out of town for a whole week, baby. <laughs> oh, I knew it was you, Mr. Harris. May I have your autograph? Uh, well, uh, watch this, sir. Oh, please, Mr. Harris, give me your autograph. Uh, well, uh... This ought to be good, Mary. You know, he can't write his own name. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Come on, Mr. Harris, your autograph, please. Uh... Uh, look, honey, I ain't got no pencil, but here's something better than my autograph. How do you like that? He gave her a lock of his hair. He better be careful. That's what you used to do. Yeah. <laughs> All four networks. All four networks. <laughs> Quiet, Polly. Say, honey, would you like this fellow's autograph, this man with the parrot? Well, I don't know. Who is he? Frank Buck. <laughs> Mary. Well, uh, uh, Miss, uh, I happen to be Jack Benny. Oh. Well, would you sign Frank Buck anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. Frank Buck Benny. There you are. Thank you. Uh, so long, Phil. I'll see you in Denver. Okay, Jackson. So long, Libby. Goodbye, Phil. Say, Jack, why isn't Phil going with us? Oh, he's got some business to take care of with his own show, so he's going to take a later train. Attention, please. All passengers for Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga will have to walk. We lost the train going through Santa Anita. <laughs> Rochester and his lousy tips. Gosh, Jack, look what time it is. Yeah, I hope this ticket window isn't I'll say, old chap, uh -huh. begging your pardon and all that sort of rot, could you inform me as to the location of the information booth, please? Well, uh, now, I'm not sure. I... Well, perhaps, old fellow, your daughter would know. No, this girl, uh... <laughs> this girl isn't my daughter. Oh, I don't mean her. I mean the little one with the feathers. <laughs> That's a parrot. You see? Well, I say, old oh boy, did you sit on the egg? There's such a resemblance. <laughs> Look, mister, I don't know where the information booth is. Well, cheerio, bub bubble gum, and all that sort of thing. <laughs> what is that about? Me? Everybody walks up to me. Jack, you better hurry over and get your tickets. I'll meet you on the train. Okay, Mary, you take the parrot, and I'll see you and Don at the gate. All right, but hurry. Now, let's see. The ticket window is over... Oh, there you are, mister. I'm so glad you haven't left yet. Oh, for heaven's sake. You again. I'm trying to get a ticket, will you? Please, take care of yourself. Mister, I'll take care of myself. I, I bought something for you. 
Here, take this fruit and these flowers. Flowers? Give them to the little lady. Thank you, but Mr. L- I just hate to say goodbye. Look, look you don't have to I worry. Do, I, I'm, a I'm a stranger. I'm a stranger. I didn't want to come all the way to the station, but you made me. You made me. You made me. Why do people have to go away? <laughs> Ten thousand taxi drivers, Los Angeles. I had to get him. <laughs> well, here's the ticket window. Good, there's nobody ahead of me. Oh, Mister, Mister. Yes. <laughs> oh, fine. Are you the agent? No, no. They put me behind these bars because I toasted marshmallows out of season. <laughs> now look, Mister, Mister. I'm in a hurry. You look. I'm in a hurry. Look, give me, give me two for Denver. Two Denver? You want them on rye or whole wheat? <laughs> Look, not sandwiches. Not Denver, Colorado. Oh, I'm sorry. I used to work in the Brown Derby. Oh. Well, you're in the railroad station now. You can take it off. <laughs> well, I can't. There's a guy named Pony under it giving me away. Look, mister, all I want are two tickets to Denver, Colorado, you see? You and your wife? My wife? Oh, no, no, don't deny it. I know you just got married. You're still carrying the flowers. Look, this bouquet of flowers... Why don't you throw it? You're darn right I'll throw it. There. Whoops, I caught it. Wait till the girls hear about this. <laughs> look, mister, look, mister, look. Will you do me a favor? Look, give me two tickets for Denver, Colorado. That's all I want. That's all. Yes. See, two tickets. That's all I want. Two tickets to Denver, Colorado. Uh, do you have your baggage all taken care of? Yes, yes, I have. Well, it may be cold in Denver. Is your coat checked? Well, I... <laughs> oh. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Uh, would you say that again, mister? Say what? Is your coat checked? No, it's blue, sir. <laughs> Attention, please, attention. The Santa Fe, California, number 7, going to Denver is ready to leave. Uh, oh, my goodness. Hey, give me those two tickets to Denver. Quick. Jack, hurry, hurry. I'm coming, please. I'm coming. I'm coming. Wow. Well, I made it. Oh, boy, what I went through to get these tickets. But... We're on our way. Well, come on, Jack. Let's go in the dining car and get something to eat. No, no, Mary. No, no. I'm too tired. I'm going to my room and lie down. See, it'll be good to stretch out and... Wait a minute. There's somebody's clothes hanging up on my hook. <laughs> What's this in my bed? <laughs> hey, you! I told you I hate to say goodbye. <laughs> I, I tried to break away, but I couldn't... Uh, don't cry. I'm coming back. It's all your fault. I didn't want I'm only to going to danger. But you made me, you made me, you made me. Honey, you made me. Oh, nuts. Hey, Mary, I'll join you in the dining room. Next Sunday night, we'll be broadcasting from the Civic Auditorium in Denver, Colorado, for the March of Dimes campaign. So I hope you'll all be listening. Good night. Casting for the March of Dimes campaign in Denver, Colorado, the Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, the Sportsman's Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the star of our show, a man who is loved and admired by millions, not only a good fellow, but a great artist. And here I am, Don Wilson. <laughs> Don, what's the idea of that introduction? I come all the way to Denver to do a show, and you introduce yourself as the star. Well, Jack, Denver happens to be my hometown, and I didn't think you'd mind. I wouldn't mind. Uh, Don, if that ever happens again, you'll be back doing spot announcements on KOA. (laughs) But, Don, I can understand your enthusiasm, this being your hometown. From what I've seen of it, you can be very proud. Oh, I'm glad you said that, Jack. I don't want to sound overly sentimental, but I love every square mile of Denver. Well, that's as it should be, Don, because I'm sure Denver loves every square mile of you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you see, you're... (laughs) 
it. So you're even. Oh, now, there you go again, Jack, making jokes about my size. Now, you may not believe this, but when I was born, I was an incubator baby. Oh, I know, Don. Mayor Newton told me that in your honor, the city still has the incubator. <laughs> really? Yes, Jack, I didn't know that. I wonder if they'd let me take it back to California with me. I don't think so, Don. They're holding the rodeo in it now. Oh. <laughs> or rodeo, as they call it, in Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamon. <laughs> but, Don, isn't it wonderful to be broadcasting here from the city auditorium with an audience of 3,500 people? Yes, Jack, and for the March of Dimes, each of them contributed anywhere from five to $1,000 for a ticket to get in. Don... And you mean the people paid as much as a thousand dollars to get in here today? They certainly did. Gosh, if I'd have known that, I'd I'd have raised the price of the popcorn in the lobby. <laughs> I could have gotten ten dollars a pop. <laughs> but anyway, oh hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Say, Mary, now isn't it a thrill being in Denver at this time? Oh, it's wonderful, Jack. And wasn't that a grand reception we got when we arrived in town? I'll say, but Mary, there's something I wanted to talk to you about. What's that? When we got off the train, just because I shook hands with the governor, you didn't have to kiss the mayor. You say? <laughs> you say hello your way, I'll say hello mine. <laughs> What's done is done. But remember, when we leave, things are going to be different. Do you understand? Okay, I'll shake hands with the governor and you kiss the mayor. <laughs> I, I didn't mean that. Huh? Well, kidding aside, Jack, Mayor Newton is awful cute. And just think, being the mayor of a city the size of Denver, and he's only 35 years old. 35? Don, is that how young Mayor Newton is? That's right, Jack, just 35. Gosh, it's... I don't believe I'm only three years older than you. Jack. What? We were talking about the mayor, not the governor. Oh. I... Listen, I know who we're talking about. In fact, Don introduced me to both of them. You know, Mary Denver is Don's hometown. Oh, I know it is, Jack, and I've written a poem in his honor. A po well, that's sweet. Let's hear it. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> to you, Don Wilson, our announcer. We love you all. Yes, every pound, sir. Yeah. From the front or from the back. So round, so firm, so fully <laughs> tight. <laughs> That's very good, Mary, very good. Of course, I've had so much fun here in Denver, I think everything is good. I certainly had a thrill last night at the stock show when I auctioned off a pride steer. And, Mary, you wouldn't believe it, but that steer weighed 2,000 pounds. I never Jack. thought that... I never Jack. thought... Jack. What? How much did you say that steer weighed? Uh, 2,000 pounds. That's a lot of bull. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good, huh, Jack? <laughs> Now, how could you possibly pull such an old corny joke? That's a lot of pull. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Jack, is that an old joke? Oh, Mary, a long time ago when I was in Vaudeville, I sent one of my old suits to a rescue mission, and that joke was in the pocket. Really? <laughs> but, Jack, two weeks ago I heard that same joke on Fred Allen's program. How do you like that? He's worn out the suit, but he's still using the joke. <laughs> I was a little nervous there. You look me. You know, well, I'm in a strange town. Now, Don, what I said still goes. I don't want any more of those corners. Okay, girls, throw away your last suits and don't you miss, because who hog ties me first gets a great big kiss. that introduction all by yourself? Well, I sure did, Jackson. My brain's really working, but I gotta give uh, Livy credit for it. She told me what to do. Mary, what'd you tell him to do? I tell him to squirt some oil in that hole in his head. <laughs> good, good. Well, Phil, now that all the parts in your head are moving again, tell me, you've been having a good time here in Denver? You know, there's so many places of interest. You're not kidding, Jackson. When I got off the train, the first thing I did was go straight to the library. Well, Phil, I... <laughs> Wait a minute. You went to the library? 
What'd you take out? The librarian. Ha <laughs> ha! Two more jokes like that, and you'll have to have your oil changed. <laughs> Don't change it. Just add a quart. <laughs> so your being in a library makes about as much sense as Maxie Rosenblum addressing Congress. Although, Phil, if you spent more time in the library, you might learn something. What are you talking about, Jackson? There are other ways to pick up an education. I've done a lot of traveling. I've been all over the country. I know plenty. Oh, you do, eh? Well, then tell me. In what state is Pike's Peak? All right, all right. So you picked the one thing I don't know. <laughs> I thought so. Phil, I'll make it simpler. What city is the capital of Colorado? Well, um, um... Look, look, look. Here's a, in what state is Colorado Springs? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, oh, um... Oh, Jack, let him alone. Wait a minute, Mary. Watch this. Phil, how many pool rooms are there in Colorado? 297. <laughs> He knows. Pennsylvania has 492. New York's got 2,053. North Dakota's got 165. West Virginia's okay, got 23. Okay, hey, we, we, believe you, we believe you. We believe you. We believe you. <laughs> now listen, Phil, closely and I'll help you. I asked you what city is the capital of Colorado and you didn't know. Well, I'll give you a hint. The name of the city starts with a D and ends with an R. Pueblo? <laughs> Pick up your stick and lead the band, okay, will you? Jackson. Oh, can hit it, boy. No more music. Wait a minute, Phil. No more music. We haven't got time. No more music. We haven't got to. We're running way over now. That was your guess is as good as mine, played by Phil Harris, and he makes you want to go to Leadville Orchestra. <laughs> and now, folks, wait a minute, Jackson. Wait a minute. I wish you wouldn't make no cracks about the band. I went to a lot of trouble rounding up these musicians here in Colorado. I almost didn't have enough men. Really? Yeah, but luckily the governor pardoned six of them just for this program. <laughs> oh. Well, that was nice of the governor. Come in. Yes? Is this the Jack Benny program? Well, come right in. Gee, I'm glad to see you. Have a chair. I have a telegram for Jack Benny. Uh, take it, Mary. Thank you, son. Phil, why'd you make such a fuss over the kid? He's only a messenger boy. I thought it was Mayor Newton. <laughs> Say, maybe... No, it couldn't be. This boy shaves already. <laughs> Say, Mary, uh, who's the telegram from? Uh, just a minute, I'll open it. Okay. Oh, Jack, look, it's from New York, from Fred Allen. Oh, fine. What does he say? Uh, dear Jack, I hear that your show and the stock show are in Denver at the same time. It's... <laughs> There's a wind coming from the west that tells me the stock show is fighting a losing battle. <laughs> How do you like that? There's a P.S. A P.S. on a telegram? I saw pictures of you in the current issue of Liberty Magazine. To paraphrase Patrick Henry, don't give me liberty, give me death. I think he's so smart. Say, Jack, I saw those pictures in Liberty Magazine, and I read the article, too. So did I, Jack. You know, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, Mary, do I look good in the picture? Oh, Jack, you look wonderful. Thank heaven. And Lady Esther. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mary. You know Come that. on, Jackson, come on. Let's hurry up and finish this clam bake. I want to leave for home as soon as this show's over. Well, Phil, what's the big hurry? Are you kidding while I'm here in Denver, Robert Taylor's going to be a guest star on my program back in Hollywood. Just think of it. Robert Taylor with Alice. Why, Phil, don't tell me you're jealous. Certainly I'm jealous. Robert Taylor's a big husky guy with dimples in his cheeks, beautiful wavy hair, and a gorgeous smile. He's almost as pretty as I am. <laughs> what? And if he can sing That's What I Like About the South, I'm dead. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about Robert Taylor. He's a dope. He doesn't even know that Pueblo is the capital of Colorado. <laughs> well, if he thinks I'm going to tell him, he's crazy. <laughs> Certainly. So believe me, Phil. Hey, Jackson, where's Dennis? Ain't it time for the kid to do his song? Phil, if you'd come to rehearsal, you'd know that Dennis couldn't be here. He had a bad cold for two weeks, and his doctor wouldn't let him travel. Gee, I wish he could have been here. He'd have gotten a big kick when I auctioned off that steer at the stock show last night. You should have seen it too, Phil. That steer weighed 2,000 pounds. That's a lot of bull. Now cut that out! 
I ball down now for using that same old corny gag, and I don't want to hear it again. All right, Jackson, all right. Don't ball me out. I'm worried about Alice and Robert Taylor. That's why I'm so cognacitated. <laughs> Bill, there's no such word as cognacitated. What's the difference? I pronounced it right. <laughs> oh, go sit down. Now, kids, uh, since this particular broadcast is so important, I do think we ought to, uh... Excuse me, uh... Come in. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Benny? Well, it's Governor Lee now to Colorado. Well, Governor, it certainly is an honor having you drop in on us. Well, thank you, Jack. I'm so glad you came to Denver, and I hope you haven't minded the weather. It practically changes from one hour to the next. I know what you mean, Governor. Yesterday I saw a girl walking down the street wearing a bare midriff and snowshoes. <laughs> oh, by the way, Governor, you remember Mary. You met her at the station. Oh, yes. How are you, Mary? Oh, hello, Governor. Uh, do you mind if I ask you a personal question? Oh, not at all. Well, I've seen several pictures of you, and in each one you were wearing a bow tie. And I noticed that you have on a bow tie again today. Do you always wear one? Uh, yes, it facilitates matters when I hear, appear before the state legislature. The uh, bow tie? Yes. Uh, once you get them swooning and the rest is easy. <laughs> uh, I believe I understand. Uh, Governor... Would you mind answering another question? Oh, not at all, Mary. Well, I notice your hair is rather thin on top and you're gray around the temples. How old are you? Well, Thirty-eight. <laughs> Thirty-eight? But, Governor, I'm thirty-eight. I thought we looked about the same age. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there'll be a short pause while Jack Benny turns Republican. <laughs> Mary, please. Hey, Jackson. Hey, introduce me. Introduce me. Oh, yes, yes. Governor Now, sir, uh, this is Phil Harris. Hello, Mr. Harris. Uh, didn't I see you in the library? Oh, yes, sir. Were you there, too? Yes. <laughs> uh, I was trying to find a book that would translate the lyrics of That's What I Like About the South. <laughs> Hey, hey, that governor's a sharpie, isn't he? Yeah, you're not... <laughs> you're not kidding, Phil. You should have heard the governor last night. You know, Governor Nows gave a little talk at the stock show when I auctioned off the prize steer. You know, Governor, that steer weighed 2,000 pounds. Well, that's a lot of bull. <laughs> hey, did you hear that joke, kids? What a sense of humor. Yeah. Mary, he's the governor. What a terrific gag. <laughs> Oh, Jack, I shouldn't have pulled such a corny joke. Corny? Governor, it was sensational. It was not only clever, but it had just the right touch of subtlety. Now, tell me, Governor, have you ever thought of doing any writing? Uh, no, Jack, I haven't. You see, the affairs of state keep me quite busy. Most of my writing is confined to official correspondence and personal letters. Oh. Uh, which reminds me, you didn't answer a letter I sent you two years ago. Yeah, it's funny. I should remember receiving a letter from you. What was in it? I mean, how did it go? It started out, I can't stand Jack Benny because... Oh, the contest! Oh, the contest, of course. Oh, the contest. Well, I'm sorry that you didn't win the prize. Oh, that's all right, Jack. Because of that letter, I was elected governor of Colorado. <laughs> Oh, Don, Don, come here a minute. Yes, Jack. Governor, I want you to meet my announcer, Don Wilson. Oh, I know Don. He's one of our native tongues. <laughs> oh, Governor, uh, uh, Governor, <laughs> just a minute, Governor. Uh, look at the script. Uh, that's son. Oh, well, look at Wilson, and that's tongue. <laughs> oh, oh, I get it. <laughs> Hello, Don. Well, hello, Governor. Well, Governor, I'm awfully happy you dropped in. If there's anything you want me to do while I'm in Denver, just mention it. Right there at the bottom of the page, Governor. It's all right. <laughs> well, Jack, there's one thing I'd really like to have you do. I'd be just as nervous if I was Governor. <laughs> what would you like me to do, Governor? Now, please play your violin. What? Governor, you asked Jack to play his violin in front of all these people? Yes. Aren't you interested in being reelected? <laughs> Mary. Hmm? Well, maybe you're right, Mary, but seriously, Jack, before I go, the citizens of Colorado would like to give you this citation as a token of their gratitude. 
It says, in appreciation to Jack Benny for coming to Denver and launching the 1948 March of Dimes campaign. His presence has brought sunshine and joy to stricken faces, and he has accelerated the giving of many thousands of dollars in the never-ending fight against infantile paralysis. And Jack, it gave me great personal pleasure to place my signature and the state seal on this citation. Well, thank you, Governor. Thank you very, very much. And if, and if you'll notice, Jack, there's a real dime on that citation. I noticed that right away. Yes. And Jack, uh, you might be interested to know that this coin is the first one of a new series. If you look closely, you'll see how it differs from the other dimes. Let me see. Well, what do you know? E pluribus Benny. <laughs> Well, thank you, Governor. It's been a great pleasure coming up to Colorado for this campaign. <laughs> Say, Don. Yes, Jack. I want to tell you I really got a thrill meeting the Governor, and I don't blame you for being proud of this wonderful state. This trip has been one of the most... Oh, there's the telephone. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, what did you call me for? Well, I'm over here in your suite at the Brown Palace Hotel, and I think you're in trouble. Why? What happened? The manager dropped in. The manager of the hotel? Uh-huh, and he got a little upset when he found you rented out your other twin bed. <laughs> oh. And he got kind of aggravated when he found you were doing laundry in the bathroom. <laughs> Gee. And then he got awful red in the face when he saw the slot machines you put in the hall. <laughs> God. And when he found out you opened a coffee shop in the broom closet, he went all to pieces. <laughs> oh, that's awful. How are things in my living room? Not so good. One of the barbers just quit. <laughs> well, have one of my writers take over his chair. Okay? Yes, sir. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? Can I have a night? Can I have a night off? Some friends here in Denver are giving me a birthday party. Wait a minute, Rochester. I thought your birthday was in April. That's in Los Angeles. <laughs> oh. In Chicago, my birthday's in June. I see, but your real birthday is today. Yes, sir. How old are you? 38. <laughs> Rochester, you're 38? Yeah, ain't everybody. <laughs> yes, everybody but Al Jolson. He's 39. <laughs> Rochester, you can go tonight, but I want you to be home early because... Oh, 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 hold it, boss, hold it. What's the matter? The hotel man just came back. He got into a fight with the man who ran your extra bed, fell over a bundle of laundry in the bathroom, lost $2 in your slot machine, got into Jetson in your coffee shop, and one of your barbers snipped off his ear. <laughs> See, I better calm the manager down. Put him on the phone. Let me talk to him. Where will he find the party he listened to him? <laughs> Oh, well, never mind. I'll talk to him later. Goodbye. Goodbye. I better get to the hotel right away and straighten things up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Governor Naus, Mayor Newton, and everybody in Denver for making our week here so enjoyable and inviting us here to help launch the March of Dimes campaign. They've done a wonderful job here in Denver. Tomorrow, tomorrow night, we'll be saying hello to all my friends in Pueblo, Colorado, to continue this worthy cause. Good night, everybody. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Benny and his troop have been on tour, campaigning for the March of Dimes in Denver and Pueblo, Colorado. So now let's pick them up on the California Limited en route to Los Angeles. Mary and Jack are playing a game of gin rummy. Mm, you, you sure are lucky, Mary. I play better gin rummy than you do, and yet you always win. Well, it's your own fault, Jack. You don't concentrate on the card. I do, too. Now, let's see. I know you have three nines, three queens, and the six, seven, and eight of hearts. So I know you can't use this card. Here, 
Here's the deuce of spades. Gin. <laughs> Gin, let me see your hand. There you are. Three eights, four kings, and three deuces. Wait a minute. Where are those two nines you picked up? That was yesterday. <laughs> oh. Well, go ahead and deal the cards again. Yeah, I never played in such bad luck in all of my life. Hey, Jackson, you got a corkscrew? Here you are, Phil. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Gee, I hope I have better luck with this hand than... Pick my... up your cards. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Jack, pick up your last card. Whoops. <laughs> oh, boy, what a hand this is. Mary, I'm warning you, any card you throw, I can use. Go ahead, throw one. It's your turn first. Oh, yes. Here. Gin. <laughs> Jack! Jack, it wasn't my fault. Stop pulling my hair. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Mary. Well, that's enough gin rummy for me. What do I owe you? Five dollars and twenty cents. All right, I'll pay you tomorrow. Oh, Jack, you always say that. Why don't you pay up as soon as you lose? But, Mary, it's so inconvenient. I don't care. Take off your shoe and pay me now. <laughs> All right, I'll pay you. I'll pay you. Turn around. Turn around? Just because you're going to take your shoe off? The fives are pinned to my underwear. <laughs> Here. Here's your money. Thanks. You're welcome. You know, Mary, you're the luckiest person. Hey, Jackson, you got a bottle opener? Here you are, Phil. Thanks. <laughs> you know, Mary, you're the luckiest person I've ever seen. Oh, what's the difference? You win once in a while, too. Yeah, I guess so. But you know, we certainly did have a wonderful time in Denver. And gee, wasn't it exciting when we arrived in Pueblo? They picked us up in those police cars and drove us to the hotel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? When the police were helping Phil in the car, he started yelling, You ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> yeah. You know, Mary, it was too bad that Dennis couldn't have made this trip with us. He'd have gotten a kick out of all that snow. Uh huh. But I don't think he could have stood the train trip. It's awful cold in here. Yeah, but you can't blame the train. I mean, the weather outside is freezing here. Oh, hello, Don. Hello. Oh, say, kids, the conductor just told me we're crossing the border into California. Right now? Yes. Gee, Gee it's warm. warm. <laughs> <laughs> Will we be home soon, Don? No, California's such a big state, we don't get in until tomorrow morning. Gosh, another night on the train. Huh? Hey, Jackson, you got any extra glasses in here? Yeah, Phil. Uh, there are three of them over there. Thanks. <laughs> Say, Don, Don, I haven't seen you since we left Denver. Are you on Are you on this car? No, no, I'm two cars back. Two cars back? Wait a minute, Don, that's the diner. I know. Oh. <laughs> Say, Jack, uh, I'm a little hungry. How about sandwiches? All right, Mary, I'll go and get some. I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay. Now, let's see. The diner's down this way. Who knows how much I love you? You do. Who has the charms that very few do? I do. <laughs> Who has the... <laughs> you do. Dum, da, dum, dum, dum. I beg your pardon, mister. Yes? Could you tell me which way the engine is? The engine? Oh, yes, you're going in the wrong direction. It's the other way. Uh, why do you want to know? I'm the engineer. <laughs> I don't know why. I... The engineer? Hey! <laughs> Gee, I hope he finds it before we reach Los Angeles. It's the first time I ever went to Catalina by rail. <laughs> and with this fog, you know, it could happen. Oh, well, the diner should be in the next... Uh, from what you tell me, Rochester, I can't understand how many Benny ever got along without you. Me neither. Uh-oh. There's Rochester in the washroom talking to one of the porters. I gotta listen to this. Uh, say, Rochester, besides writing his radio show, 
What else you do for Mr. Benny? <laughs> well, I'm his publicity agent, manager, and last but not least, I'm his personal advisor. He won't even make a picture unless I okay the script. Well, what about the horn blows at midnight? I was out of town when that one came <laughs> Uh, too bad Mr. Benny wasn't. <laughs> no, fine. Yeah, Mr. Benny won't do a thing without my approval. Well, uh, tell me, Rochester, do you help him handle his money? My friend, when Mr. Be- when you discuss Mr. Benny's money, remove your hat and bow towards the Bank of America. <laughs> well, I can't understand why Mr. Benny saves his money like that. Don't he know he can't take it with him? Well, several people have told him, but he's never heard it direct from headquarters. <laughs> uh, say, Rochester, another thing I've been wanting to ask you. How old is Mr. Benny? Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Well, Rochester, I thought about that joke on the radio. Well, in the vernacular, we show people uh, that is known as a running gang. Well, how long has it been running? Two years longer than the Mississippi. How do you like that? Now, come on, Rochester. We're old friends and we're all alone. You can tell me his right age. Well, all right. Lean over here and I'll whisper it. Mr. Benny's real age. Rochester! Is... You knows how much I love you. <laughs> Never mind that. Now, Rochester, I don't like you discussing my private affairs. Yes, sir. And will you please go to the diner and get some sandwiches for me and Miss Livingston? Bring them back to my car. Yes. Hmm. I think he'd know better than to talk about me in front of strangers like that. Now, let's see. Oh, here's Mary's compartment. Gee, Jack, it took you a long time. Where are the sandwiches? Rochester will bring them in a minute. Want to play some more cards, Mary? No, I'd rather listen to the radio. Say, this is Wednesday night, and Dennis, the show is on right now. Uh, tune them in, Mary. Okay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for his final vocal selection tonight, Dennis Day will sing his latest victory recording, A Few More Kisses. Oh, gee, we just caught the end of his program. <laughs> and that includes... And that includes tonight's program. Tune in again next Wednesday for a day in the life of Dennis Day. Gee, there... Kid has a great voice. You know, it'll be good to see him again, won't it, Mary? Say, Jack, I wonder if we'll have time... Hey, Jackson. <laughs> what? You got a couple of aspirins? <laughs> oh. So you find... <laughs> So you finally got yourself a little hangover. Well, don't expect any sympathy from me, Phil. Jackson, gee, you know how it is. Train trips are dull, all cramped up in a tiny compartment all by myself and away from home, and, well, I got kind of moody, so... I don't know. I I just sat down and started thinking. Oh, well, well, I can understand that, Phil. What were you thinking about? Bourbon. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake. By the way, Phil, I heard your program last Sunday. It was a wonderful show. Robert Taylor did a great job filling in for you. Robert Taylor, Robert Taylor. Some guy to pick out as my replacement. Why, what's wrong with Taylor? What's wrong with him? His real name is Spangler Arlington Brew. (laughs) Spangler Arlington Brew. Well, that sounds like the last names of Manny, Moe, and Jack. (laughs) My right name is Benny Kabelski. What are you mad about? (laughs) Why don't you and him move in together? Oh, Phil! Phil, stop being jealous. Let him take him. I don't want him. Oh, Phil, stop being jealous. Bob was wonderful on your show. And the audience gave a terrific hand when he sang. That's what I like about the South. I'll never see what people understand about that lousy song. (laughs) Oh, fine. Look who's talking. I'm starved. Where's Rochester with those sandwiches? I don't know. I'll go out and look for them. Yeah, da dee da dum, bum dee da dum, da dee da dee da dum. Yeah, da dee da dum, 
Well. Oh, what a cute little baby. Uh, do you... Do you mind if I play with him for a second, madam? Why, no, not at all. Hello, baby. <laughs> Come up here in my arms. Come on. Ups the daisy. Oh, look at him. He's so cute. And his eyes are the same color as mine. Lake Louise Blue. <laughs> Uh, how old is he, lady? Thirty-eight. <laughs> what? A weeks. Oh, oh, weeks. I can't you get you get you go. He's such a cute little thing. Here, take him back, lady. You have a lovely child. Thank you. A little doll that. Hmm. That baby is. Just think. Someday he may run for president. The Republicans will make up their minds pretty soon, or maybe this year. <laughs> Where can Rochester be with those sandwiches, I wonder? <laughs> da da bum 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 The best things in life are free. What a song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure this is the car with Well, Rochester, what else do you do for Mr. Benny? Everything. There ain't nobody works harder than I do. Mm, instead of getting the sandwich, he's still talking to the porter there. Well, if he works you so hard, why don't you leave? Oh, I couldn't quit Mr. Benny. That would be cruel. What do you mean, cruel? I'm the only man alive who knows how to put him together in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> to put him together? Yeah, first I get his hair and all the other accessories. Rochester! But... Coming, mother! <laughs> Rochester, why don't you get those sandwiches? I ordered them, boss. They're sending them down with the waiter. Oh, well, then, then Miss Livingston must have them by this time. I'll go back to my compartment and go to bed. See you in the morning. Yum, bum, bum, bum. Pardon me, madam. Pardon me, sir. Pardon me, please. Just a minute, you! <laughs> huh? Say, aren't you Jack Benny? Yes, yes. Well, I, I'm a fan of yours. I listen to you all the time on the radio. Oh, really? What's your name? Joe Besser. Messer? No, Bester! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Are you on your way to Los Angeles? Yes, I'm going to be there for two weeks. And I, I sure would like to get tickets for your program. Say, how do I go about it? Well, I don't handle the tickets myself, but if you call my business manager, Mert Blum, at Hollywood 6265, he'll put you in touch with my secretary, Bert Scott, at Hollywood 6234, you see. And if Mr. Scott hasn't any tickets, he'll have you call the advertising agency. And so fair! <laughs> <laughs> well, look. Look, I'll write it down and give it to you before we get off the train. Well, well do. Do do that. I will. I will. <laughs> what a character that guy, isn't he? <laughs> Well, we get in early in the morning. I better get some sleep, I think. Last call for breakfast. Last call for breakfast. Oh, Jack, Jack. Hey, Jackson. Oh, good morning, Mary. Hello, Phil. Hey, kids, according to the timetable, it won't be long now. We've already gone through San Bernardino, Fontana, Anaheim, and we've... There goes Azusa. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, Mary, that's where they had to put off that taxi driver. Remember the one that was so sentimental he couldn't say goodbye to us when he left? You yeah. Remember? <laughs> Wasn't he a strange character? Yeah. What a silly guy. Hey, look. Look, the train is slowing down. That's right, Jackson. We're coming into Cucamonga. <laughs> Los Angeles, Los Angeles Union Station, your luggage will be taken to the cab stand. Well, Mary, here we are. We're home. Uh, can I brush you off, Miss Livingston? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, brush you off, Mr. Benny? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, brush you off, Mr. Wilson? Please. Now, 
Now, Dom, if you'll turn around, he can brush your back. <laughs> Hey, Jack. What? The people seem to be getting off the other end. Well, let's go. Now watch your step, please. Everybody all. Jack, what's holding up the line? I don't know. There's somebody up in front with a lot of bags. Hey, you, get moving. Well, give you? me time to get my luggage. Well, pick it up and get going. Come on, come oh, on. Oh, so fast. Well, we want to get off here. Come on, move, will you? Oh, stop pushing. Oh, you crazy, you. <laughs> Come on, kids. Come on. Mary, Phil. We can get off right here. On track five, train just arrived from Anaheim, Azusa, and Coop Kamunga. <laughs> Come on, kids. We better get out of the cab stand. I hope we won't, we won't, we won't have to wait too long for our luggage. There. Train just arrived on track five from Anaheim, Azusa, and Coop. There goes the red cap with our baggage, Mary. <laughs> Uh, let's follow him, huh? Good. He'll take him to the cab stand, then we go right home. Among us. <laughs> he must have gone to Anaheim between Cook and Among us. Oh, Jack, look. There's Dennis. Well, what do you know? Hey, Dennis. Dennis, here we are. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. Boy, am I excited. We better hurry or we'll miss the train. <laughs> Miss the train? Yeah, aren't we going to Denver? <laughs> going to Denver, Dennis, we just came back. We did last Sunday's show there. That's right, Dennis. We talked to your doctor, and he wouldn't let us take you out of town. Yeah. How, uh, how you been feeling, kid? Gee, last week I had to visit my doctor five times. You visit your doctor five times for a cold? Cold? He's got pneumonia. <laughs> Well, Dennis, if your doctor's sick, why did he want you to visit him? He's delirious. He thinks I'm a basket of fruit. <laughs> oh. You should have seen the trouble I had last Sunday. What? And I wanted to get away from him so I could go to the studio and sing on your program. On my program? Dennis, you couldn't have. I wasn't even in town. Yeah, we should have told me. So, Dennis, when you got to the studio and you didn't see Don nor Phil nor Mary, no musician, what did you think? I thought you were cutting down expenses. <laughs> now, come on, Dennis, let's go home. I see you still have your luggage. All except my coat. Oh, is your coat checked? No, it's my doctor's. <laughs> Cut that out! <laughs> Jack, it's what? been a long train ride. I want to get home. Okay, Mary, here comes the taxi. Dennis, we'll see you later. Huh? Okay. Oh, taxi! Taxi! Driver, would you take us out? Oh, it's you, mister. You're back. You're back. <laughs> Mary. This is the taxi driver that brought us to the station. I didn't want to come to the station, but you made me. You made me. And I couldn't say goodbye. Look, fella, look. But you're back now. You're back. That's all that matters. Oh, for heaven's sake. Look, fella. I hope you had a nice trip. But don't ever go away again. I was lost without you. And you too, lady. It's so good to Stop see you. Stop kissing her hand. Look, driver. Come on. Put your bags in the car. Put your bags in the car. We're going home. We're going home. Driver, you're creating a scene. Man. I don't care. I'm so glad you're Taxi back. Driver. Happy days are here again. Drive the bar queer again. Not so fast. Driver. Driver. Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to listen in next Sunday night when our guests will be my next-door neighbors and very good friends, Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, last night was a big night in Hollywood. The occasion was a special showing of Ronald Coleman's new picture, A Double Life. 
Naturally, all the important stars in Hollywood received invitations to attend this gala affair. And while all this was going on, where was our little star? Uh, Rochester, hand me my pajamas. I'm going to bed. Here you are, boss. No, 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 my woolen ones. The nights are awfully cold. I know it's cold, but you've already got three comforters, two quilts, an afghan, and four electric blankets with a direct line to Boulder Dam. <laughs> Never mind. Just turn out the lights and I'll go to sleep. Don't you want me to read to you like I always do? Yes. Uh, pick up one of those trade papers, either the variety or the reporter. There okay. Now, let's see. Say, boss, look what it says. What? Tonight at the Academy Theater, there will be a special showing of Ronald Coleman's new Universal International picture, A Double Life. I know, I know. It says all the big stars in Hollywood have been, atten- have been invited to attend. Yeah, I know. Didn't they mail you an invitation? Well, frankly, I don't know whether they did or not. I, I didn't even bother looking. Oh, boss, come now. <laughs> what? This morning when the mailman came by, you grabbed his bag and went through it like an octopus with a mix master in each hand. <laughs> I was looking for a reply from Dorothy Dix. <laughs> anyway, who wants to go to a Hollywood premiere? You always see the same people. Barbara Stanwyck will be there with Robert Taylor. Lauren Bacall will be there with Humphrey Bogart. Lana Turner will be there with... Let me see today's paper. <laughs> Sir, believe me, I'm not mad because I didn't get an invitation to the preview. As a matter of fact, if Universal Studios, if William Getz, the executive producer, if Ronald Coleman himself called me on the phone right now, I wouldn't go to that... I'll get it, Rochester, I'll get it. Hello? Is this Sam's Meat Market? No, it isn't. Was it, boss? Oh, some guy wanted Sam's Meat Market. Sam's Meat Market? That's the new place down the corner. They're having a big opening tonight. They are? Didn't you get an invitation to that either? <laughs> I wouldn't go if I did. You always see the same things. Yeah. Liver will be there with bacon. Sirloin will be there now with... cut that out. <laughs> now, Rochester, I'm going to bed, so turn out the light, will you? You'll get it, boss. You'll get it. I've got it. Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Mary. Oh, hello, Mary. I'm glad I caught you. I thought maybe you had already left to see Ronald Coleman's picture. Uh, no, Mary. I was supposed to go, but I don't know. When you've been a star as long as I have, you don't, you don't get excited about those things, you know. Gee, and I thought we could go together. Mm, no, no, Mary. I'm ready for bed. Oh, that's too bad. I have two tickets. What? 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 What, what was that, Mary? What, what, what did you say? What, what did you say, Mary? What? I said I've got, got, got two, 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 two tickets to Ronald Coleman's picture. <laughs> Mary, just because you got tickets, you don't have to be so nervous about it. Look, I was ready for bed, but I wouldn't let you down, so while I get dressed, you jump in a cab and pick me up in ten minutes. Okay, Jack. I may be a few minutes late. I want to stop off at the florist and get a corsage. Good, good. <laughs> while you're there, get one for yourself, too. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, come over as soon as you can. Goodbye. Rochester! Rochester, I'm going to the opening. I knew Sam wouldn't let you down. <laughs> Not the meat market. Now, stop jabbering and help me dress. Hiya, Jackson. The door was open, so I came right in. Oh, hello, Phil. Where are you going? Oh, I promised Mary I'd take her to a special showing of Ronald Coleman's new picture. No kidding, Jackson. You mean you got an invitation? I certainly did. That's why I'm putting on this tuxedo. You may not know it, Phil, but for the past 20 years, I've been rubbing elbows with the most important people in show business. From the looks of them sleeves, you must have been rubbing them pretty hard. <laughs> All right, so it's a little thin around the elbows. Now, pardon me while I get dressed, will I'll you? I'll help you, Jackson. While you're putting on your shirt, I'll button your shoes. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Oh, Rochester, hand me my wing collar, will you please? Yes, sir. Uh-oh. What's the matter? You wear a size 15 and a half collar, and this is only a 14. Oh, that's all right. We can make it work. Put it on. Okay. Here's the collar button. Yeah, I got it. Now, hold still. Boy, this collar's really stiff. Yeah. Just a minute now. Mm. There, I got it. Yeah. How's that, boss? I I guess it's all right, but it's so tight I can hardly... <laughs> oh, darn it. Slipped off the collar button. Now, try it again, Rochester. Boss, this collar's too tight for you. Well, pull it harder. I'm getting it. I'm get... Hold still. There. Gosh, this collar's so tight I can hardly breathe. Phil, how do I look? Like Herbert Hoover with a crew haircut. 
Don't be so funny. Oh, there's Mary. Now, all I have to do is snap on this bow tie, and I'll be on my way. <laughs> Darn it. There it goes again. Rochester, where's my bow tie? It went out the window and headed for Capistrano. <laughs> Well, get me another one. Coming, Mary, coming. Phil, can I drop you off any place? No, Jackson, I'll stay here. I'm a little hungry. Rochester, get me a olive and a glass. <laughs> okay, Phil, make yourself at home, will you? Say, Mary, don't look now, but ever since we've been riding in this cab, there's been a moving van following us. I know. What? So many times I've gone to the theater and found out I left the tickets on the piano. So this time I'm taking the piano with me. <laughs> Say, you know, Mary, that's a oh, good... Oh, quiet. You fall for everything. <laughs> I've got the tickets right here. <laughs> and the invitations, too. Well, let me see. <laughs> hmm. Universal International cordially invites you to attend a special showing of A Double Life starring Ronald Coleman. Say, gee, gee, that makes a really beautiful invitation, isn't it? Here, are, folks, Academy Theater. Come on, Mary. How much is that, driver? A dollar sixty. <laughs> oh, darn it. Jack, what happened? Nothing, nothing. Here you are, driver. Keep the change. Thanks. Fix your collar. I'm trying to, but darn it, I've lost my bow tie. No, you haven't. They've got the searchlight on it. It'll be down in a minute. <laughs> oh, yes. Here it comes. There. I got it. Oh, no, that's the one that was headed for Capistrano. Here it is. Fix my collar. <clears throat> there. Come on, Mary. Let's go in. Gosh, look. Look, all of us big stars are here. Come on, hurry. Hold your own invitations, please. You spectators, stand back. Let them in. How do you do, Mr. Gable? Good evening, Mr. Taylor. How are you, Mr. Peck? How do you do, Miss Livingston? I told you spectators to stand... I'm with her! (laughs) Oh, well then go right in, mister. Hmm, Mister. (laughs) He doesn't even know I'm Jack Benny. Well, don't tell him. He has something to look forward to. What? Come on, Jack. Hurry. The lights are starting to dim. Okay. Hey, Mary, here are two seats here right in this row. A little more than halfway in. Follow me. Pardon 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 me. Oh, darn it. There's only one seat. We'll have to go back. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me, pardon me. Pardon me, pardon me. Pardon me, pardon me. Uh, pardon me, pardon me. Pardon me, pardon me. Pardon me, pardon me. Jack, come back. You went out the exit. <laughs> oh, yes. Here we are, Mary. Here are two seats on the aisle. Good. Gee, Jack, we just made it. The travelogue is coming on. Oh, yes. As the sun comes up over the famous diamond head in Honolulu, we pay another visit to that land of enchantment resting far out in the blue Pacific, the Hawaiian Islands. And now amid the rays of the setting sun... (laughs) It's with heavy heart that we say goodbye to Hawaii, home of the pineapple, where everybody is on the (laughs) dole. Oh, Fitzpatrick, if you pour any more of those pineapple jokes... You'll get canned! How do you like that? He must be a friend of Phil Harris. <laughs> hey, Mary. Mary, here comes the feature picture. Yeah, look. Ronald Coleman in a double life. <laughs> What a crowd. Hurry, Jack, or we'll never get out to the lobby. Okay. Gosh, Mary, that was one of the best pictures I ever saw. You know? Yes, and it was such an appropriate title. A double life. Yeah. It really fit. Mr. Coleman was perfect as the Broadway star who was afraid to play a fellow. Well. Oh, fine. 
I suppose you could have played a fella better than Ronald Coleman. No, Mary, I don't think the people would like me and Ronnie's part in the picture, but then, on the other hand, do you think the public would have liked Coleman and the horn blows at midnight? <laughs> they wouldn't have liked that picture with Eisenhower in it. <laughs> I guess not. Say, Mary. Mary, isn't that Mr. and Mrs. Coleman over there? Ronnie and Benita? Where? There. Just coming out of the theater. Oh, say, Ronnie. Ronnie. What is it, Benita? <laughs> Hey, isn't that Jack Benny over there? Where? All for the love. Well, let's hurry, Benita. Perhaps he hasn't seen us. I think he, <laughs> I think he has. He's coming towards us. Well, I've got an idea, so he won't recognize me. Ronnie, Ronnie, stop. What are you doing with my hat? I'm going to wear it. Maybe he'll think I'm Tom Brenneman. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, but then you'll have to kiss him. <laughs> Anyway, let's, let's try and get rid of him quickly. I want to go to Sierra's and celebrate. All right, but don't create a scene. It's be pleasant to him, and perhaps he'll go away. Yes, you tell me the same thing about your mother, and she's been with us for 20 years. <laughs> well, Ronnie, Benita, how are you? Hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Hello, Benita. Say, Ronnie, your picture was simply wonderful. Oh, thank you, Jack. Glad you liked it. Like it? You know, Ronnie, watching your performance this evening was one of the most enjoyable experiences I've ever had. Oh. Oh, well... Not only is a double life a great picture, but your acting was the finest I've ever seen on the stage or screen. Oh, oh now, now, Mary, I... Gee, you were absolutely brilliant as a fellow. And when you played yourself, you were so suave and so handsome. Well, I... Mary, stop. You're embarrassing him. Uh, Benita, you keep out of this. <laughs> You know, Ronnie, my favorite scene in the whole picture was, was when you, as a fellow, accused your wife, Desdemona, of being unfaithful because you saw another man carrying her handkerchief. Oh, you mean the speech where I said, By heaven, I saw the handkerchief in his hand. Oh, perjured woman, thou dost tone my heart and makes me call what I intend to do a murder, which I thought a sacrifice. I saw the handkerchief. Yes, yes, that's the speech I mean. Only, Ronnie... If I were playing the part, <laughs> I believe I would have done it something like this. By heaven. <laughs> I saw the handkerchief in his hand. Oh, perjured woman! Thou just stole my heart and makes me call what I intend to do a murder. <laughs> Which I thought a sacrifice. I saw the hanky. <laughs> there, how did that sound? Wonderful. Phil Harris couldn't have read it better. He couldn't have read it at all. <laughs> but, Ronnie, how can you say that? Let's get the depth of that last line. I saw the hanky. <laughs> Again. Where's my bow tie? I swallowed it. No, no, here it is on the sidewalk. Excuse me a minute. Where's my collar button? I knew I swallowed something. Well, I got another one here in my vest pocket. Oh, say, Ronnie. Ronnie, if you don't mind my talking about your picture again. No, not at all. Not at all. Well, I've seen you in a lot of pictures, and I thought that in this one, you were... You were... No, thank you. No, no, let me finish. Let me finish. I, uh... I thought that you were miscast. Oh. So you... You thought I was miscast? Yes. You see, in the picture, they have you turn killer and commit murder. And Ronnie, in real life, I mean, you... You couldn't possibly murder anybody. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Huh? Well, it's getting late. We'd better be running along. No, no, Benita. No, no, you can't go home yet. This is the opening of Ronnie's new picture. A night like this calls for a celebration. I know. Let's all go over to my house and play the slot machine. No, no, thanks. <laughs> no, thanks. Benita and I are going to Ciro's. Goodbye. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, Jack, it's getting kind of late. Maybe we ought to go home. Mary, we can't run off and leave the Coleman's. They'll think I'm snubbing them. <laughs> now, now, we'll all go to Ciro's. Come on, come on, everybody. Oh, taxi! Taxi! 
Uh, look, look, Jack, we can't all get into one taxi. There are four of us. Okay, you folks take this cab, Mary, and I'll take the next one. See you, Ciro's. Oh, Anita, what a fool I was to let Benny know where we were going. Oh, what's the difference, darling? And anyway, Mary's such a nice girl. No, oh, I'm nothing against her. I like Mary. It's that Benny I can't stand. <laughs> Lately, it seems that everywhere I go, I run into him. It happens to me, too. Last Thursday afternoon, I saw him at Greer Garson's tea. Benny? At a tea party for women? Yes. Yeah. He had a shawl over his head and came around to tell our fortunes. <laughs> no. Yes. Yeah. Then he took his violin, played golden earrings, and passed around a tambourine. You mean Benny himself passed the tambourine? Yes. Well, that's too bad. His monkey must have died. <laughs> Look, darling, let's forget about him. Let's talk about us. About us? Mm. You know, I didn't have a chance to tell you how much I enjoyed Double Life. Oh. I think it is the finest picture you've ever made. Uh, well, thank you very much, darling. I mean, you know, I'm your severest critic. I think your performance in that picture was magnificent. Well. You, you're wonderful. Oh. And... Ronnie. Yes? I bought a new fur coat. <laughs> what did you say, dear? I said I thought your performance in the picture was... Here we are, zero. Uh, you're certainly lucky to get this ringside table. Yes, I hear they have a wonderful floor show. Well, it was nice we all arrived together and no one was kept waiting. Yes, yes, uh, it was, wasn't it? Say, Jack, it's kind of chilly in here. Will you please get me my coat? Certainly, Mary. What about you, Benita? Is your coat checked? No, it's Persian lamb. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, that's, that's rather good, Benita. Yes, I know. I heard it on Fred Allen's program. <laughs> our food so we'll be through eating when the floor show starts. All right, I'll call the waiter. Oh, waiter, waiter. Yeah. <laughs> waiter, I'll have a shrimp cocktail, filet mignon rare, and asparagus. Uh, very good, madame. I'll have a Caesar salad, lobster a la Newburgh, and broccoli. Yes, madame. I think I'll have some consomme, prime ribs of beef, medium rare, and a baked potato. Uh, yes, sir. And now, what about you, shoulders? <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll have a potage au jour at Salade avec Roquefort, a la bouffe avec Bordelais, a pomme de terre. Well, get here! <laughs> Never mind the comment. Just bring what I ordered. Uh, say, Jack, when did you start eating French food? Since they devaluated the Franks. <laughs> Would you like something to drink with your dinner? We have some wonderful vintage champagne. Mom 37, Cordon Rouge 33, and Piper Heidsick 35. Uh, make mine Schlitz 47. <laughs> that, uh, that was a good year, wasn't it? Not for USC. <laughs> Look, I never... Never mind the wisecrack. You, you ought to pay a little more attention to your job. Some waiter. Look at this tablecloth and a napkin. I've never seen such dirty linen. Well, you do them for us, Wong Fu. <laughs> That's besides the point. I've never seen such a rude, impertinent waiter. I got a good mind... Stop raising your voice to me. What? Nobody asked you to come in here in the first place. You spoiled my whole evening. <laughs> That's the last straw. How about you and me stepping outside? This is Ciro's. We can do it right here. <laughs> Look, waiter, just go get our orders. Will oh, you please? all right. Ronnie, you can come out from under the table. People have stopped staring. <laughs> well, now let us all have a pleasant evening. Come on. Let's eat, drink, and be merry. <laughs> Well, that was really a delicious dinner. Did you enjoy yours, Ronnie? Yeah, I certainly did. Uh, waiter, give me the check, please. Oh, no, 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 Ronnie. This is, uh, this is my little party. Oh, but after all, Jack, we're celebrating my new picture. I don't care. Waiter, don't listen to him. 
Uh, give me the check. All right, but you'll hate yourself in the morning. <laughs> Never mind. Give it to me. Thank you. Hey, Ronnie, this is the first time I've ever seen Jack pick up a check. I wonder what happened. And somebody must have spiked his slits. <laughs> A waiter, give me your pencil. I want to check these items. <laughs> Thank you. Now, let's see. You know, this really has been a grand evening. Yes, the floor show is wonderful. And Kugard's music is so exciting. And this Jerry Lester, such a funny comedian. And the atmosphere is nice and cozy. Please, please, would you all be quiet? I'm going over the check. <laughs> now, let's see. Shrimp cocktail, a dollar. Consomme, 85 cents. Caesar salad, a dollar and a quarter. Filet mignon. Whoops! <laughs> hmm. Lobster. Hmm. 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 Ronnie. Ronnie, did you have an extra cup of coffee? No, Jack, I had milk. Well, where did this extra cup of coffee come from, waiter? You ordered it. I didn't order it, and I want it taken off the bill. Oh, Jack, please. Now, you keep out of this, Mary. Waiter, I'm not going to pay for this extra cup of coffee. I want uh, no, to... No, Jack, Jack, let me pay the check. No, no, Ronnie, this is my party. This is my party. Now, look, waiter, I don't mind paying for what we got. But I know that no one here had an extra cup of coffee. Oh, Jack, for heaven's sake. I'll have this bill corrected immediately. Ronnie, the orchestra's playing. Let's dance our way out the back door. All right. <laughs> Anita, come quick. Hurry up. Now, what about it, waiter? You ordered the coffee and you'll pay for it. I ordered it, but I changed my mind and you took it back. Did you see me leave the table with it? Yes. By heaven, I saw the coffee in your hand. <laughs> oh, perjured waiter. What? Now that stone my heart. And makes me call what I intend to do a murder. Well, which I thought a sacrifice. I saw the coffee. <laughs> oh, John, there goes my collar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman for being with us tonight. And to Dennis Day, my best wishes and congratulations. Good night, folks. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills. It's Sunday morning, and Jack is still in bed. Well, it's ten o'clock. I guess I better go in and wake up the boss. He's got to get down to the studio and rehearse. Mr. Benny, it's ten o'clock. Doggone it, just look at him. Sleeping like a little baby. I guess I better take his thumb out of his mouth. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Benny, it's ten o'clock Gosh, you sure a hard man to wake up Well, maybe this will do it Oh, come on now, boss, this is getting monotonous Open up those baby blue eyes of yours Maybe this will work Well, there's only one thing left to do. I'll have to go back to the old standby. Here goes. Uh, who? What? Uh, who? What? Who? Uh, how? What? Oh, 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 it's you, Rochester. Thanks for waking me up. And turn on the light. The lights are on. Get your head out of the cash register. <laughs> oh, I can't. Uh, push the no sale button. Thanks. Good morning, boss. How'd you sleep? Oh, pretty good. Only I was awfully cold last night. You're cold every night. Maybe you haven't got enough blood. Rochester, I'm not anemic. Now lay out my clothes and get me a clean shirt. I don't want to be late for rehearsal. Yes. <laughs> not anemic. I wonder what he'd say if he found out that every morning I sneaked into the bathroom and put ketchup on his razor to keep up his morale. <laughs> Now, let's 
see. The shirt should be in this drawer. Woolen socks, handkerchiefs, sweaters. Uh-oh, what's this? A bottle of ketchup. Mm. Rochester, how about my shirt? Coming, boss. Here it is. Thanks. Say, boss, while I was getting the shirt out of the drawer, I noticed a bottle of ketchup. Oh, you did, eh? Yeah, where'd you get it? Rochester, uh, come here a minute. Huh? I got a little surprise for you. Surprise? Yeah, you keep putting it on and I keep scraping it off, but I'm not wasting it just to please my vanity. <laughs> You mean you knew it was ketchup? Well, yes, but I will admit that in the beginning it fooled me. It did? Yeah, the first time I saw it on my razor, I took a sample down to the blood bank. They analyzed it and said, Mr. Benny, some people have girls, some people have boys, but you're going to have a tomato. <laughs> now, I want more... You answer the door, Rochester. I want to finish dressing. Yes, sir. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful dawn. Now that it started it raining, I won't have to sprinkle the lawn. <laughs> yeah, it's about time. Coming, coming. Hello, Rochester. Oh, good morning, Miss Livingston. <laughs> Say, Rochester, now that we've had rain, why don't you take down that sign that Mr. Benny has in front of the house? Which one? The one that says water inside, 25 cents a glass. No use taking it down I'll just change water to lemonade <laughs> Who is it, Rochester? It's Miss Livingston Oh, will you come in my room, Mary? I'm dressed Hello, Jack You better hurry It'll be late for rehearsal Why? We've got... Oh, my goodness Look what time it is I never realized it was this late You still have to shave I know, I know It won't take long I'll take off my tie I'll get the razor I'll get the ketchup Yeah <laughs> No, no, we haven't time for that now You go get the car, Rochester I'll be down in a minute uh, try, try the motor again, Rochester. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, try it again, Rochester. <laughs> Only this time, step on the throttle, advance the spark, pull out the choke, and hold down the clutch. Keep talking, boss. So far, you haven't named one thing we've got. <laughs> all right, all right. Try the motor again. Yes. There we are. I knew we wouldn't have any trouble. The motor was cold, that's all. You know, it's been quite chilly here lately. If you think it's cold here in California, let me read this letter I got from Mama. Oh, a letter from your mother, eh? Well, what does the wild Irish rose of Plainfield <laughs> have to say? <laughs> well, just a second. I have it right here. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> My darling daughter, Mary. Wow. This is the first chance I've had to write to since the recent blizzard here in Plainfield. In some places, the snow was so deep, many people got lost. Gee. Your, si your sister, Babe, went out during the worst part of the storm and rescued three men. It was sure smart of Babe putting that keg of brandy around her neck. I heard it would look good. Imagine finding three frozen men. Go on, Mary. She's thawing out the cute one and putting the other two in the deep freeze. <laughs> what? So much for Babe. Good. <laughs> But it's been so cold, your Uncle Harry has been sitting in the living room all week with his feet in the fireplace. Mm. I wish I could take him of the habit, as he's getting shorter every day. <laughs> That's silly. What else is new? Mary, you have no idea how much inconvenience the blizzard caused. Mm. People got stranded in offices, stores, and factories. And your father was stuck in a burlesque show for ten days. Mm. <laughs> we finally got him home, and he's all right now. Except I wish he'd stop applauding every time I take off my apron. <laughs> no! <laughs> I don't mind that so much, but now he's building a runway in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Mary, your mother's too old to go back to that. <laughs> no other news. We'll close for now. Your loving mother, naughty Angeline Livingston. Mary, the next time you write your mother, tell... Rochester, right here we are at the studio. Yes, sir. Yeah, I wish there was some place to park along the street. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack. Why don't you put it in a parking lot? Yeah, I guess we'll have to. All right, Rochester, drive in here. Oh, boy, a real parking lot. Wait till I tell the boys in the lodge about this. <laughs> Never mind. Just go in. Now, Rochester, you go over and pay the attendant. Miss Livingston and I are going into the studio. Yes, sir. Say, Jack, look at that beautiful car driving in. Gee, what a car. A chauffeur in uniform and everything. Must be the president of the network. Here we are, sir. NBC. Thank you, James. <laughs> Mary. Mary, it's Dennis. Let's watch this. I'll get your things out of the car, sir. That's a coat. Thank you. Your hat. Thank you. Your popsicle. <laughs> Thanks. James, you've been licking it. <laughs> Hey, Dennis! Dennis! Huh? Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. <laughs> Gee, Dennis, I've never seen such a beautiful car. Where'd you get it? Oh, my mother gave it to me for my birthday. An expensive car like that for a birthday present? Your mother must be rich. No, she's honest, John. <laughs> oh, well, it's sweet of your mother to give you such a nice car, but how come you've got a chauffeur, Dennis? Well, I was talking to the man who prepares my income tax, and he told me I ought to get some more deductible items. Oh, oh, is your chauffeur deductible? Yeah, James deductible. <laughs> Cut that out! Jack, we better get the studio. We'd we'll be late. Yeah, his vacation didn't do him any good at all. Come on, Dennis, let's go. <laughs> Say, aren't you Jack Benny's chauffeur? I sure am. Are you Dennis Day's chauffeur? Yes. Yeah. Say, tell me, how many radio programs has Mr. Benny got? One. Ha! <laughs> Rochester, I'll be out in an hour. Come on, kids, we better get to the studio and rehearse. Huh? All right, all right, all right, boys, now look. We'll run over that number once more. Let's go over to... Hold four. it, Phil, hold it, I'm here. Okay, fellas, take five. Now, Phil, um... Let's get started with... The... Holy smoke, Jackson. How long you been out of bed? For about an hour. Why? Well, morning may become Electra, but it ain't done nothing for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harris, through your lips past the most beautiful jokes in the world. <laughs> Look, Phil, I have a very important sketch to rehearse, so would you mind cooperating? Okay, okay. I'd like to get home early today anyway. Today is my wedding anniversary. Alice and I have been married seven years. Well, congratulations, Phil. Yes. Sir, gee, seven of the happiest, most wonderful years that ever happened to anyone. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Phil. A lot of people don't realize how lucky they are. Yeah. Thank goodness Alice does. <laughs> oh, fine. Say, Phil, what are you giving Alice for an anniversary present? This golden locket? Here. Look how it opens. And look what's engraved inside. Gee, a poem. Yeah, I... I wrote that poem myself. Oh, let me, let me read it, Phil. Okay, go ahead. To Alice. To the fairest of the fair. To the one and only queen. To the cutest little ham hock. From her loving turnip green. <laughs> Why, Phil. Phil Z. Harris. Oh, gee. I guess I'm just a sentimental old slush. <laughs> no, no, Phil, you're cute. But now, look, kid, we got our sketch to rehearse. <laughs> There's something else. They scratched it out here, huh? <laughs> we got a... <laughs> we got a sketch to rehearse. And I want it to be good, so let's get at it right away. Huh? Well, can I run over my song first, Mr. Benny? Sure, sure. Go ahead. We'll rehearse later. Very good, Dennis. Very good. Now, kids, we haven't got much time, so let's rehearse our play, our sketch. We're going to do our version of Tyrone Powers' 20th Century Fox picture, Nightmare Alley. 
The story is about a carnival. So, Mary, you're going to be Xena, the snake charmer. Phil, you'll be the fire eater. And, Dennis, you're going to be the two-headed man. All right, Don. Set the scene. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, our version of Nightmare Alley, that weird, foreboding story of life in a carnival. Our scene opens in front of a sideshow on the crowded midway. Henry, 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 right this way. Step up to the platform and go the price of 25 cents. You'll not only see the tattooed lady, the two-headed man, and the fire eater, but the one and only geek in captivity. <laughs> yes, folks. That scream you just heard was the geek. That wild, inhuman fiend is dangerous. <laughs> he is a beast. <laughs> he is a monster. He is a monster. <laughs> Watch it, Elliot. I'll <laughs> <laughs> step right up, folks. Step right up and get your ticket. So hurry, hurry, hurry. Oh, Zena, Zena. What is it, Tyrone? <laughs> I want to talk to you. Well, let's talk later. i got to get out on the platform and do my snake dance. That's what I want to talk to you about. I wish you'd keep your snakes out of my dressing room. Why? This morning, I thought I put on a necktie, sat down to breakfast, and it ate more than I did. <laughs> You don't think my snakes make a good tie? Take it off. I can't. He swallowed a whole egg. Now I can't get him back through the loop. <laughs> now, Zena, I want to talk to you about that mind-reading act we've been pra practicing for a long time. With those clever signals we've worked out, we can't miss. Now, let's get out on that platform and break the act in today. Okay, Tyrone, lead the way. All right, folks, gather around the platform while my assistant, Zena, passes amongst you. I will tell each and every one of you anything that's on your mind. And I will do this blindfolded. Are you ready, Tyrone? Ready. I am pointing to a person. What is this person's name? That person's name is William. My name is Esther. Thank you, Esther William. <laughs> And now, for the next question. I have a man here. Now tell me what this man has got on his wrist. He's not in the balcony, eh? Take it again. <laughs> now tell me what this man's got on his wrist. Wrist? Turn around so you can't watch. I've got it. Good. Now what has this man got on his wrist? A war. <laughs> Correct. And it's under his wristwatch. Later. Dana, come here, will you? What do you want now? I'm packing up and leaving the carnival. Leaving the carnival? Tyrone. 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 Why don't you answer me? I love that name. <laughs> but, Tyrone, you can't leave the carnival. It's in your ketchup. I mean, your blood. In my blood? I don't even know why I joined the carnival. That geek is driving me nuts. I'm tired of living with those other freaks in Nightmare Alley. But, Tyrone, they all joined the carnival for some reason. Yeah. Say, maybe if I found out why they joined, I wouldn't be so mixed up. It might help me solve my problem. You mean... Yes, Portland. <laughs> it's time to go down to Nightmare Alley. <laughs> question for tonight is, why did you join the carnival? Shall we go? As President Truman said to Mrs. Truman, we might as well walk. We've got no porch to sit on. Ah, <laughs> oh, Portland, it's good to be back at Nightmare Alley. Well, I see the fire eater is home. He must have just finished his dinner. The garbage pail is full of ashes. I'll see. Somebody, I say somebody's whopping my panel with a hot knuckle. <laughs> You're the fire eater, aren't you? I beg your pardon? Uh, 
I said, you're the fire eater, aren't you? Nonsense the name. Come right on in and join me. I'm just having a cup of lighter fluid. Hank, <laughs> tell me, how long have you been a fire eater? Practically all my life, son. When I was six weeks old, I burped and set my crib on fire. I see. And, son, being a fire eater affected my way of living. Such as? My favorite cartoon is Ella Sanders. My favorite movie is Forever Ember. And your favorite radio comedian? Jack Benny. Benny? He burns me up. <laughs> That's a joke, son. I know, Mr. Robson. Well, laugh it up. Don't just stand there flicking my flint. <laughs> Look, Mr. Fire Eater, I want to ask you a question. Why did you join the carnival? Well, a long time ago, son, I was in love with a girl. Uh-huh. She left me and joined the carnival, and I didn't see her for several years. I see. So you decided to join a carnival, too. Yes, sir. I wanted to be near my old flame. So long. So long. So long. So long. So long, that is. The life of a fire eater, kind of a corny guy, but he does as best as he can. <laughs> well, here's the next house. I guess the two-headed man is in. He's looking out the door and the window at the same time. Hi, brother. Well, how do you do? How do you do? <laughs> You're the man with two heads, eh? That I am, me boy, that I am. But today we're not speaking. What are you mad about? What am I mad about? Me boy, we had watermelon for lunch and it happened again. What happened again? He ate the watermelon and I had to spit out the seeds. <laughs> oh. Not only that, but his dandruff keeps falling on my shoulder. Well, do you mind if I talk to your other head? You can try if you want to, but he's been moody all day. Well, I'll try. Hello? Howdy, Bob. <laughs> Would you mind answering a few questions? I don't mind, providing John will keep quiet. Oh, is that his name, John? Yep, I'm John's other head. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, that's pretty good. You can send me out in the rain, Bob. I'm a slicker. That's a fine sense of humor. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I'm warning you, John, stay out of this or I'll knock your block off. Oh, so you're going to knock me block off? That's what I said. I'll keep your nose out of me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You do argue like that. You have to eat together, sleep together, and live together. Not after tomorrow morning. What? When I shave, it'll be push, pull, click, click, and I'll be all alone. <laughs> well, look, I only came in here to ask you a question. Why did you join the carnival? Well, I'll tell you, John. With the price of what they are today, we had to work where we could make the most money. The most money? Why? We've got two mouths to feed. Good day to you. Good day. Good day. Good day. House, I wonder who lives here. Well, who are you? <laughs> I'm the fat lady. <laughs> oh, yes, I remember seeing you in New York. How did you get out here to the coast? Oh, I came here on the TWA bus. Wait a minute, the TWA is an airplane. It flies. Not when I'm on it. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Well, for a fat lady, you sure are cute. <laughs> Lovely engaged, she's a whale. Now tell me, why did you join the carnival? I didn't. They joined me. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. Well, it's just one more house for Nightmare Alley. I wonder who lives here. <laughs> yeah, it's the geek. Well, I might as well ask him to. Pardon me, are you the geek? Uh, yeah, I'm the geek. I'm the most inhuman, ferocious monster in captivity. Well, tell me, Geek, where were you captured? In Bullock's basement. <laughs> in Bullock's basement? What were you doing down there? I was buying Chanel number no. five. I stink. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, tell me, Geek, why did you join the carnival? I told you, I was captured. Well, are you doing all right with the carnival? Yeah, they give me $10 a week and all the people I can eat. You? You eat people? Yeah. Won't you come in? Of course not, but you're kidding. You don't really eat people. Sure I do. There's a girl in Plainfield going to send me two out of her deep freeze. <laughs> what? Uh, goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Well, that ends right there. Come on, Tina. It's time. Good night, everybody. Strike 
program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yesterday, February 14th, was St. Valentine's Day. It was also Jack Benny's birthday. So let's go back to yesterday. A lot of people are making preparations for the big event. We'll look in on some of them. The regular meeting of the Beverly Hills Beavers will now come to order. The motion before the club is resolved. The Beavers will give Mr. Jack Benny a surprise birthday party. And for this purpose, we'll withdraw our entire treasury of $1.43. I second the motion, Stevie. Thank you, Joy. But call me Mr. President. No familiarity during meetings. (laughs) Any questions? What is it, Cliff? Well, I'm a new member of the Beavers... And I'd like to know who Jack Benny is. <laughs> Are you kidding? Don't you know who Jack Benny is? No, who is he? Who is Jack Benny? He's only the greatest fullback the Yale ever had. <laughs> yeah. And he quit football because he was afraid of hurting his hands. And that would stop him from playing the violin. <laughs> That's right, Cliff. Mr. Benny's one of the world's greatest violinists. Well, if he's the world's greatest violinist, how come I never heard of him? Well, that's because he's so modest. He goes under the name of Yasha Heifetz. <laughs> Say, he sounds like quite a guy. He sure is. Why, why take the baseball uniforms we're wearing? Mr. Benny loaned us the money to get them. Yeah. <laughs> And my father says that 4% is reasonable. (laughs) Well, since Mr. Benny's such a nice man, I vote that we give him the birthday party. That makes it unanimous. Now, any other questions? Yes, Mr. President. Are we going to invite any girls to the party? Cliff, since you're a new member, I'll read you part of our bylaws. Bylaws of the Beverly Hills Beavers, Chapter 12, Rule 8, Clause D. If any beaver is ever seen with a member of the opposite sex, this means girls, (laughs) he will be fined seven cents, barred from holding office in this club, and will never be allowed to have custody of the club mascot, Blinky, our white mouse. But I thought Blinky died last month. We're still keeping him. (laughs) Now, let's make out our invitation list. We'll invite all of Mr. Benny's friends. Say, by the way, how old is Mr. Benny? Today he's 39. (laughs) And that proves how smart he is, too. Why? Well, he was in my uncle's class in school, and my uncle's 55. (laughs) Well, look. Let's all go over to Miss Livington's house and she'll give us a list of Mr. Benny's friends. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, Pauline, have you straightened out the living room? Yes, Miss Livingston. Oh, won't Mr. Benny be surprised when he finds that you're giving him a birthday party? He sure will. Uh, Tell me, Pauline, how does my new dress look? Oh, it's lovely, ma'am. Only if I had nice legs like yours, I wouldn't hide him with such a long skirt. <laughs> Men like pretty legs, you know. <laughs> yeah, and I think for years I hid mine behind a counter at the May Company. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not trying to be glamorous tonight. Phil and Don are married, Dennis is too young for me, and Mr. Benny is too old for me. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm surprised to hear you say that anyone is too young or too old for you. Why? Well, anything between the Boy Scouts and the Townsend Club is okay with me. (laughs) Why, Pauline, I didn't know you liked men so much. Oh, I do, ma'am. Why, I like them so much that I... Well, well, you'd think me silly if I told you what my favorite dream has been for years. No, I won't. Tell me, what is your favorite dream? That I'm a Dixie Cup in the Brooklyn Dodgers locker room. Well, come on, Pauline. There's work to do. Yes, ma'am. Say, would you please tell me one thing, Miss Livingston? Uh, Don't you ever go out with Mr. Benny, just the two of you alone? Occasionally. I remember one very warm night last summer when Jack drove me up to the top of Mulholland Drive. Gee, how'd you make out? Fine. I sold more good humors than he did. (laughs) 
Now, Pauline, you set the table and I'll... Miss Livingston's residence. Just one moment, please. Miss Livingston, it's the baker. He wishes to talk to you. Oh, good. Hello? Yes, I want the cake delivered as early as possible. How many candles? Thirty-nine. That's right, thirty-nine candles and arrange them in the shape of a question mark. <laughs> Okay. Goodbye. Say, Miss Livingston, how old is Mr. Benny really? Oh, I'm sorry. I can't tell you. You see, Mr. Benny and I have an agreement that saves us both a lot of embarrassment. An agreement? Yes. I never tell anyone his age, and he never tells anyone my salary. (laughs) But, but Miss Livingston, if Mr. Benny pays you so little, how can you afford this nice apartment and all your nice clothes and everything? My mother writes for Bob Hope. (laughs) Pauline, have you arranged the place card? Yes, ma'am. Did you order the food? Yes. Since you're serving buffet style, I ordered a turkey, a roast beef, and two hams. Well, that takes care of Don Wilson. What about the rest of the people? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miss Livingston. Well, I better get over the invitation list and start calling. Gee, I've been trying to reach Bill Harris all day, but he's been out. I wonder where he is. <laughs> Four ball in the side pocket. Watch it, Mel. Okay. <laughs> Say, Phil, how's about coming over to my place for a poker game tonight? Yeah, I'd like to, Mel, but I can't. Six ball in the corner. <laughs> hey, why can't you come, Phil? Well, it's Jackson's birthday today, and me and the boys in my band are throwing him a surprise party. Nine ball in the side. <laughs> going to throw the party, Phil? Over by, uh, over at my house. Everybody's going to have a lot of fun. I just filled the pool. Oh, it's pretty cold weather for swimming, eh? Huh? Yeah, but once you dive in, you don't notice it. Oh, the pool heated? No, it's filled with bourbon. Thirteen ball on the side. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yesterday, Frankie, my guitar player slipped into the pool and almost drowned. Did you finally save him? Yeah, we broke his arm running him through the ringer. Seven ball twice a <laughs> Phil, Phil, I've been wanting to ask you something. Yeah, go ahead. What is it, Mel? Well, I hate to bring it up, but I've been out of work for a long time, and I thought maybe you could give me a job. Well, maybe I can. What do you do? I'm a glass blower. Sorry, I got all the musicians I need. Two ball in the corner. <laughs> Hold it a minute. Kiss off the 12. <laughs> Yeah. Went just like it had eyes. Well, (laughs) that finishes the game. I beat you 25 to 4. Gee, some guys have all the luck. Imagine shooting pool like that and being married to Alice Faye at the same time. (laughs) Well, so long, Mel. I got to start calling the gang. Yeah. I think I'll call Dennis first. Gee, Mother, why do you want to leave the house just because I'm giving a surprise party for Mr. Benny? That's not the only reason. I've got to drive to Riverside tonight. But can't you drive there some other time? What? And spoil my truckload of oranges? (laughs) Anyway, I can't understand why you have to give a party for Mr. Benny. Because he's a very nice man. Nice man. What did he ever do for you? What did he ever do for me? Well, once he... I remember when... And not only that... And then there was a time he... Yeah, why am I giving him a party? I think you're wasting your money on that mean old man. Oh, Mother, that isn't fair. Mr. Benny has been like a father to me. Only last week he gave me advice on how to be popular with the girls. Oh, he did, huh? Yeah, he took me aside and said, Dennis, my boy, you're missing a lot. You ought to get a girl and on some moonlight night drive her over to Lover's Lane and put your arms around her and pull her up close to you... Put your face close to hers and... Yes, then what did Mr. Benny say? When he got to that part, he fainted. (laughs) Well, now look, Dennis. Let me give you some advice on that. Yes, Mother. Son, as you go through life, you'll meet many girls. And someday you'll meet the one girl you'll want to spend the rest of your life with. And it will probably be when you least expect it. Gee, say, Mom, how did you first meet Father? 
We were matched together in the golden gloves. <laughs> he had the sweetest left hook. Well, Dennis, I've got to be running along now. I hope your party turns out nice. Thank you, Mother. Oh, by the way, how old is Mr. Benny today? Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine, indeed. Why, I remember seeing him in a vaudeville act with Al Jolson when they introduced the song, Sonny Boy. How long ago was that? I don't remember. But Benny was singing and Jolson was climbing up on his knees. <laughs> so long, son. Goodbye, Mother. Lots of luck with your oranges. Well, I've got everything set for the party. Now I better see if I have everybody's phone number. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, I've got everybody's phone number but Don Wilson's. I'll look that one up. Hmm. Fine thing. Here it is my birthday and I'm all alone. Nobody even thinks of me. Nobody cares. No cards, not even a phone call. Who is it? It's me, boss. Rochester, I don't want to talk to anyone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> Quiet, Polly. When I want your help, I'll ask for it. Boss, you haven't eaten all day. Do you want me to get... I don't want anything. Just leave me alone. Okay, okay. I wonder what's wrong with him. He's kept himself locked in the den all day. The last time he brewed like this was when his girlfriend, Gladys Zabisco, broke the engagement. Then she sent back the ring and he was happy again. <laughs> I wonder what's ailing him. Maybe he bet on a horse. No, if Mr. Bennett bet on a horse and that horse lost, he'd beat it to death with his bare hands. <laughs> I just can't figure out what's the matter with him. Rochester, if you don't mind, I'll have my dinner served in bed. Well, what's the matter, boss? Don't you feel good? You've been brooding all day. I haven't been brooding. If I, don't, if I want to lock myself in the den, it's my own business. Wait a minute, boss. Huh? Have you been crying? What makes you think I've been crying? There's a rainbow in your little blue eyes. <laughs> there is? I mean, who cares? A lot you or anybody else worries about me anyway. You're wrong, Mr. Benning. I worry about you. Oh, you do, eh? Well, Rochester, what day is this? Saturday. Uh-huh. Saturday, February what? The 14th. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Saturday, February the... Oh, my goodness, I forgot to put out the garbage. <laughs> not that. Come back here. Now, let's not talk about it anymore. You go in and clean the den. I'm going to the kitchen, have a sandwich and a glass of garbage. I mean milk. <laughs> okay. Well, it won't take long to straighten up the den. I'll just put these books away on the shelf. And... <laughs> Come on, come on. Well, hello, Polly. Here I am, all alone. Nobody cares. Huh? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> what are you talking about? Today's my birthday. Today's my birthday. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How can I be so stupid? I better go in the kitchen and fix things up right away. Uh, excuse me, boss. Excuse me. Right there. Uh, just a minute, boss. Rochester, what are you doing? I'm putting a candle on a cracker. It's Polly's birthday. <laughs> oh, it is, eh? Well, I'm glad to hear it. I'm going to my room. That's where I'm going. Gosh, I can't figure out what's bothering the boss. He's usually so cheerful and... Hello, Mr. Benny's residence. Uh, Rochester, this is Miss Livingston. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. You'll never guess whose birthday it is today. I know, Rochester, and that's why I called. I want to give a surprise party. A party? Yes. Do you think you'd get him out of the house? Him? Certainly. Well, he sure fooled me. He laid an egg this morning. <laughs> Rochester, what are you talking about? The parrot. Parrot? It isn't a parrot's birthday. It's Mr. Benny's birthday. Oh! Oh, no. When I called the gang, I found out that everybody was giving him a party. 
So we all decided to come over to Mr. Benny's house and surprise him. Well, bring some food with you. The time lock doesn't open the icebox till six in the morning. <laughs> Well, don't worry. We have food. You just get Mr. Benny out of the house for a little while and don't let him suspect anything. Okay, Miss Livingston. Leave it to me. I'll be clever about it. Well, I feel a lot better taking this little walk. But I can't understand Rochester throwing my hat and coat out. And when I went out to get him, he slammed the door. <laughs> Yeah, I've been walking for about 40 minutes now. I'm kind of tired. I think I'll walk across the street and get on a bus for home. Fine birthday. Hey, look at this theater marquee. Now playing The Horn Blows at Midnight. <laughs> I, I guess they're running it again on account of the Academy Awards. <laughs> I think, I'll, I think I'll go and see it again. Uh, pardon me, miss. I see you're showing the horn blows at midnight. That's right. How's business? How's... Look, mister, if this is a hold-up, you're wasting your time. We haven't sold a ticket all week. <laughs> this isn't a hold-up, and give me a ticket. Here's the money. Here's a ticket and a knife. A knife? You'll have to cut your way through the brush. <laughs> Never mind. Just give me the ticket so I can go in, will you? Rochester, we've been here for four hours now. If Mr. Benny only went out for a walk, why isn't he back? I don't know, Miss Livingston. Well, I can't wait any longer. Bring on the food. Yeah, let's eat. Hey, wait a minute, kid. Since this is Jack's birthday party, I propose that we all give a toast. All of us? Yeah, we'll each take a line. Go ahead, Rochester. You start it. Okay. To our boss, Mr. Benny. This toast we do make. While we stand here talking, Don's eating the cake. <laughs> well, I waited long enough. I've got to go home. Me too. I wonder what happened to Jack. I beg your pardon, mister. Huh? I'm the manager of this theater. We've shown you the horn blows at midnight three times. Now, will you please go home so we can close up? <laughs> okay, okay. By the way, mister, the girl at the box office told me you haven't sold a ticket all week. That's quite true. Well, if that's true, how come there's someone sitting in almost every seat in this theater? We rent it out as a storage room to a mortuary. <laughs> a mortuary? You mean all the people in those seats are... That's amazing. I'll say it's amazing. Yesterday, right in the middle of the picture, three of them got up and walked out. <laughs> See, I wondered why the guy at the door didn't tear my ticket. <laughs> well, I better go on home. Gee, all the lights are out in the house. Rochester must be asleep. Now, well, let's see. Where's my key? Here's the key to my safety deposit box. Here's the key to my car. Key to my garage. Key to my vault. <laughs> Whoops, I dropped it. <laughs> Here's the key to the front door. There it is. Mm, coming home to a cold, dark house. What a birthday this was. Uh, fine, loyal gig I got. I got a good notion to fire every one of them. If I had any talent, I would. <laughs> yeah, I'm tired. Well, I might as well go to bed. Then. Now, who can that be at this time of night? Hello? Hello, is this Jack Benny? Yes. This is Western Union. We have a singing telegram for you from your sister in Chicago. Oh, a singing telegram from my sister, eh? Well, <laughs> that's nice. Go ahead, let me hear it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jack Benny. Oh, oh, oh. Happy birthday to you. Well, 
Thank you very much. That was swell. Thanks. Look, I've got to go to... Happy birthday to you. Happy, 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 happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy, 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 happy Look, birthday. Look, fella, I've got to go to bed now. Happy birthday, Jack Benny. Happy birthday, dear Jack Well, that's awfully sweet of you. Thanks, sir. Happy day, happy Look, fella, I gotta go to bed. Thank you. Happy day, happy day, happy day, happy day, happy day, happy day. Well, thank you, thank you very much. Now, I hope you're welcome. Yes, you're welcome very much. Look, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Sunday morning. Hope I have a good show this afternoon. Oh, good morning, Rochester. Good morning, boss. Feeling a little more cheerful today? Yeah, yeah, I feel fine. You should have come home earlier last night. Why? The whole gang came over to give a surprise party and celebrate your birthday. What? A surprise party for me? My whole gang? Mary? You mean Mary, Phil, Don, and Dennis? Gee, they, they didn't forget me. Why, boss, that rainbow's coming back in your little blue eyes. Well, I can't help it. I'm so happy. Good night, folks. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're broadcasting from America's foremost desert resort, Palm Springs, surrounded by Indio, Cathedral City, and 29 Palms. <laughs> and since we can't bring you the lady from 29 Palms, we give you the man of 39 years, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you. Hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And, Don, even though last week was my birthday, I just can't realize that I'm 39 years old. Oh, really, Jack? <laughs> yeah, it seems like I'm still 38. <laughs> oh, well, after I've been 39 for a few years, I'll get used to it. <laughs> uh, tell me, Don, have you been enjoying your stay here in Palm Springs? Oh, tremendously, Jack. The first day I got here, I put on my shorts, went out in the potty and lay on my back and took a sun bath. Oh, how was it? Well, my legs and shoulders were warm, but... It was snowing up on my stomach. <laughs> so, that, so that, that's what it was. I saw a tourist turn to his wife and say, Look, dear, Mount San Jacinto has a dimple in the middle. <laughs> but Don, Don, Palm Springs is really a great place for a rest. So peaceful and quiet. You sit out in the sun all day and... All you can hear is the sound of your skin cracking. <laughs> anyway, Don, you did manage to get a nice tan, you know? Well, Jack, I've been outdoors quite a bit. In fact, I've been horseback riding every day. Well, horseback riding is wonderful exercise. I do it all the time. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm late, Jack. On my way over here, I stopped in at the post office. The post office? Yeah, they make the best baked milkshakes there. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Mary. I always get my milkshakes at the hardware store here. They put nuts in it, you know? <laughs> well, really? That didn't sound like us at all, did it? <laughs> They're really delicious. You know? you know, Jack, it's strange how almost every place in Palm Springs sells steaks on the side. You're not kidding, Don. You know, a few years ago, there used to be a place here called the Palm Springs Funeral Parlor and Date Shop. 
Their slogan was, Try Our Large Economy Size Box. <laughs> Look, Jack, I just wanted to explain why I was late. I didn't mean to start a routine. Well, when you came in, Don and I were talking about horses. You know, Don, I've had a lot of experience with them, and the main thing to remember... Oh, is... stop, will you? All you know about horses is that they don't wear high heel shoes. <laughs> That's so. I know plenty. <laughs> Tell Don what happened at Roger's stables the other morning. Never mind. The only reason I fell off the horse was because I was trying that new trick, and you know. What trick was that, Mary? Well, Jack put a handkerchief on the ground and said he'd ride by at full speed and pick it up. Oh. <laughs> so what happened? He picked up the handkerchief, dropped his teeth, picked up his teeth, dropped his hair, picked up his hair, and fell in a gopher hole. <laughs> Sit down, sit down, sit down. Some rhythm. Boy, <laughs> well, you really make things up, don't you? I'm not making up anything. We've been riding the horse side saddle. Well, you're supposed to. It was a female horse. <laughs> now, let's drop it. Don, has Dennis come in yet? It's time for a song. Oh, well, no, he hasn't, Jack, and neither is Phil Harris. Oh, I meant to tell you, Don, Phil won't be here, and it's my own fault. Your fault? What do you mean? Well, before we left, Phil asked me how things were in Palm Springs. I said dry, and before I could tell him I meant the climate, he called up and canceled his reservation. <laughs> By the way, Mary, where are you staying? Well, I don't know the name of it, but it's a place on the corner of La Jolla and Indian Avenue. Well, I'll drop it. Wait a minute, I passed that corner yesterday. It's a vacant lot. That was yesterday. Today there's a $2 million hotel there. <laughs> And it's put solid till May. <laughs> well, I don't doubt it. You know, the demand for hotel rooms is terrific. I know a fellow who has nothing but the blueprints and 12 people are sleeping on it. <laughs> they get off already, you could start building. <laughs> this place is really popular. You know, I was amazed when I got down here this year and saw all the beautiful new places that have been built. It's getting swankier and swanker every year. You're right now. Oh, that's good. <laughs> You're right, Don. The, mo <laughs> the most important people in society come here. Why, even Winter Rockefeller and his bride were going to spend their honeymoon at Palm Springs. Why didn't they come? He couldn't afford it. <laughs> Mary, stop being silly. Rockefeller's got almost as much money as Crosby. <laughs> hey, that reminds me, you know, Bob Hope did a broadcast here a few weeks ago, and they made him the mayor of Palm Springs. And Jerry Colonna, the chief of police. What they do for you? They broke my glasses and pushed me out in the middle of Tom Canyon Drive. <laughs> but I don't care. Okay. Doesn't make any difference. Oh, well, there's the phone. Maybe that's Dennis now. Hello? Hello, Benny. This is Jerry Colonna, Palm Springs Chief of Police. Jerry Colonna? Well, gee, Colonna, I'm glad you phoned me. Hold the wire, uh, second, Benny. My duties as police chief are calling me. I see a desperate criminal walking toward me on Indian Avenue. I recognize him. Jesse James. Wait a minute, Colonna. Jesse James has been dead for 50 years. Wonderful climate here, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes. You know... You know, Professor Colonna, I would have phoned you, but I didn't know where you live. Oh, I'm living at the YWCA. The YWCA? Isn't that just for women? I don't ask questions. I just have fun. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake, Colonna, what would you really call me for? Well, I hate to tell you this, Benny, but I had to arrest Dennis Day this afternoon. Dennis arrested? Why? He's been in town three days and he hasn't paid for the air. He's breathing. <laughs> but, Colonna, there's no charge for fresh air. It's your first trip to Palm Springs, bud. <laughs> Look, would you let me speak to the kid, please? Okay. Hey, Dennis, your boss wants you on the telephone. See, Mr. Colonna, can I talk? Yes, don't breathe. All right. Hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. Don't worry anything about anything, kid. They can't charge you for the air you breathe. Colonna's nuts. Not as nutty as I am. I paid him two hundred dollars. <laughs> you pay well, that's the silliest thing I ever heard in all my thirty-nine years. How many years? Thirty-nine. What's the matter? You crazy or something? <laughs> what? I said, what's the matter? You crazy or something? <laughs> no, wait a minute. Dennis, that wasn't Colonna. That was you all the time. Why did you pull a trick like that? Oh, I just thought I'd have a little fun. Would you like to hear Ronald Coleman now? No, and get over here. All right, old fellow, if I can break away from beneath. Now cut that out! <laughs> hey, 
And get over here immediately. You have to think. All right, just a second. I want to say goodbye to my friend. Goodbye, Ronnie. Goodbye, old fellow. Nice of you to drop in. Goodbye, Colonna. Let it go, Gates. Don't be late. Yeah, give him my regards and come over. Who was it, Jack? The Andrew sister. <laughs> You know, when I finish uh, building my house here, I... Oh, Jack, I didn't know you were building a house in Palm Springs. Oh, yes, Dan. It's over near the mountains. And you want to know something? They wanted $5,000 just to dig the excavation. $5,000? That's what they wanted. But you know what I did, Don? What, Mary? I started a rumor that there was gold on Jack's property, and the next morning there was an excavation 12 feet deep. <laughs> For heaven's sake, who dug it? Jack did. <laughs> It would have been deeper, but I didn't have a shovel. <laughs> Where'd you say this house is, your building? Well, it's a little south of town, out by the Palm Springs Biltmore. See, to reach it, you have to pass the El Irisado, the Normandy Village, the Racket Club, the Montecito, and the Rossmore. Well, that takes care of everybody and puts a clean sheet on my bed. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Say, Jack, uh, instead of building a house, why don't you build a hotel here? A, a, a hotel here? <laughs> well, Mary, I'm not taking that kind of a dick as a gem. You take the uh, Biltmore Hotel. The Biltmore Hotel costs three million dollars to build. They've been open four days. They haven't got their money back yet. You know? <laughs> Believe me, I'm not taking any chances. Hey, Jack, we'd love to see the new house you're building. Would you take us over? I'll be glad to, Don. Of course, it's not nearly finished yet. Oh, hello. Here I am, Mr. Benny. Well, it's about time you got there. <laughs> you and your impersonation. I hope you have a good reason for being late, Dennis. Oh, I have. I was tired and overslept because yesterday I went skiing on Mount San Jacinto. You were skiing on Mount San Jacinto? Yeah, when I was halfway down the mountain, it got up and put a shirt on. <laughs> what? Jack, he might... I know, know what he means. I know. Go ahead and sing your... <laughs> that was Serenade of the Bell, sung by Dennis Day. Very good, Dennis. Thanks. By the way, kid, I was looking at you when you were singing. You've been in Palm Springs for the last five days. You look awfully pale. Yeah, nothing seems to help me. Every morning I got up early and put on my shorts, covered myself with suntan oil, and would lie on my back for hours, but I couldn't get a sunburn. Yeah, I can't understand it. All week it's been nice and sunny outside. Oh, outside! <laughs> Dennis, why don't you grab your tongue and see how far you can throw your head? <laughs> I knew that joke would mean nothing after this. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder... Hey, Jack. If... What? If you're going to take us over to see your new house, we'd better get started. Come on, everybody, before we all melt. Let's go. <laughs> well, kids, here we are. There's my house. What do you think of it? Oh, boy, I think it's swell. I can't wait till it's finished. How do you like it, Mary? Well, it's very nice, but what's the idea of all those statues on the roof? Those aren't statues. Hey, you guys, get a move on up there. <laughs> I, wonder where, I wonder where Mr. Nelson, the builder, is. Maybe that's him over there. Where? Well, coming toward us on horseback. Oh, yeah. Mr. Nelson! Mr. Nelson! Yes! Yeah. Mr. Nelson, you're supposed to be supervising this job. What are you doing on that horse? The British are coming. They are not. Then I better go take the lantern out of the tower of the El Mirador. Come back here. You can do that later. Whoa! I see. <laughs> now, Mr. Nelson... I came over to see how my house is coming along. I'd like to see the ground first. All right, all right. We'll go around to the backyard. Follow me. We're coming around to the back, man! <laughs> hmm, that was a spurt. <laughs> well, Mr. Nelson, everything I've seen so far looks very nice. And, ah, there's the tennis court. Yes, sir. We just finished that tennis court this morning. Isn't it a beauty? It sure is. Hey, wait a minute. There's nothing on the other side of the net. There's only half a court there. Oh, were you going to play with someone? 
can you imagine that, Mary? How can I play on half a tennis court? Well, Jack, you don't play tennis. That's right. What am I mad about? <laughs> hey, Mr. Benny, didn't you say you had a swimming pool? Sure, kid. It's right. Why... Hey, Mr. Nelson, where's the swimming pool? Is the what? The swimming pool. Where is it? Why, now, that's funny. It was here yesterday. Hmm. I'll check on this. Hey, Melvin. Yeah? We seem to have lost Mr. Benny's swimming pool. Were you at the cove? <laughs> Never mind, let's go... Hey, wait a minute, look at this lumber. It's so green the sap is oozing out of it. Oh, that isn't sap. We l- soak the lumber in orange juice 24 hours before we nail it up. Soak in orange juice? What does that do for the lumber? Nothing, but we've got the healthiest termites in the world. <laughs> hey, Jack, how about showing us through the room? All right, Mr. Nelson, we want to go inside the house. Okay, just follow me. All right, then, we're coming into the house! <laughs> Nice. What activity. By the way, Mr. Nelson, what is that man doing over there with the saw? Uh, he's playing it. He just got his union card from Petrillo. <laughs> well, why should he be... Oh, Jack, look at that darling little breakfast nook. Isn't it cute? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Livingston. That's the front hall. Front hall? Why, that shouldn't be out here in the back, should it? No. No, it shouldn't. I ought to get a zero for that. <laughs> Now, look, Mr. Nelson, I want to see all the rooms downstairs first. Yeah, very well. Follow me, and I'll show you the downstairs room. Uh, Here's the dining room. Uh, Here's the den. And here's the... Well, what do you know? Here's the attic. (laughs) The attic on the first floor? What's it doing down here? I guess those termites are healthier than he thought they were. (laughs) You're not kidding. Say, Mary, doesn't that fellow hammering there look familiar? Oh, he sure does. I'm going over and talk to him. Hey, mister, uh, haven't I seen you before? Very likely. I'm Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra! <laughs> Frankie, what are you doing here working as a carpenter? I'm between pictures. <laughs> Oh, but Frankie, you're a big star. You're also on the hit parade. Why do you take a job like this? Look, Jackson, in Palm Springs, a carpenter makes much more than a star. I think. <laughs> I know, but Frankie, I can't understand why a fellow like you... How do you like that? He fell right through a crack. <laughs> Well, it's just as well. Two more lines and I'd have had to pay him. <laughs> Astra, is he with Astra? <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. Nelson... Yeah, let's go upstairs and see the bedroom. All right, how about him, Mr. Nelson? Uh, certainly, if you wish. Okay, man, ready or not, here we go! <laughs> it's a regular beehive, isn't it? When they finish your house, I'm going to live here with you. What makes you think so? They nail my shoes to the floor. <laughs> oh. I think. Fly <laughs> yourself loose. I'm not taking in any borders. Say, hey, Mr. Nelson, we've been going all through the house, and I haven't seen any bathroom. Oh, my goodness, we forgot to build one. <laughs> we forgot to build a bathroom? Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to give you a flashlight and a pair of slippers. <laughs> And you're not, you're going to build one. Now, Mr. Nelson, where's my bedroom? Oh, the master bedroom. Here it is, right here. Say it, look. Why, Rochester. Oh, 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 oh hello, Mr. Nelson. Rochester, what are you doing here in my bedroom? I moved in already. But the house isn't ready yet, and besides, your room is over the garage. You ain't got a garage. What? Last night, the termites had a party and served at buffet style. 
Gosh, you mean to tell me that the termites ate up my whole garage? Oh, but the cement floor, they saved that for dancing. <laughs> well, this is terrible. I left my violin in there. They ate that, too. How do you know? They were bourbon, blood, and bloom. <laughs> Locke, I said, if you saw them eating my violin, why didn't you stop them? By the time I got here, they were using the string for dental floors. <laughs> dental floors? I think. <laughs> Look, Locke, if you can stop all this silly talk and you're not getting the master bedroom. Now take your 12 trunks and get them out of here. Okay, you win. Come on, Jezebel. <laughs> That's fine. He had to bring a dog in my house. Don't worry, boss. I gave him a flashlight and four bedroom slippers. <laughs> Good, good. Uh, now, Mr. Bennett, you better hurry if you want to see the rest of the house. It's getting late. I want to go out in the balcony first because I know I'll spend a lot of time there taking sun baths and everything. Oh, let's see the rest of the house. We can do that later. I want to see the balcony. It'll just take a minute. Darn it, this door stick. <clears throat> I got it. My, look at that mark. <laughs> I don't know yet. Mr. Nelson! Mr. Why did you put a door there and no balcony? Because my brother-in-law's a doctor. What? You're the third one this week. Oh, nuts. Come on. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, last night Jack Benny invited his girlfriend, Gladys Zabisco, to attend our Sunday morning rehearsal. So let's go back and pick them up on their way to the studio. Gosh, Gladys, it sure is a long bus trip from your house, isn't it? It sure is, baby. <laughs> Well, the bus has been so crowded, I'm sorry you had to stand all the way. Oh, that's all right. Look how long you had to stand before you found a seat. <laughs> yeah. It was smart of you telling that old lady it was Crenshaw Boulevard when it was only Vermont. <laughs> oh, well, the walk will do her good. <laughs> You know, Gladys, you're the first one I've ever invited to my rehearsal. I want you to see how a big star operates. You mean Phil Howard will be there? Gladys, when I said a star, I meant that... Oh, Speedy, I was only kidding. Stop pouting. Well, I'm the star of the show, not Phil Harris. You hurt my feelings. Oh, I know how it is, Speedy. Everyone likes to think they're the tops in their profession. Certainly. How would you feel if I said that any plumber can solder a steam pipe as fast as you can? <laughs> You know, everybody's proud of, of, of the things they do by them. Hey, here's where we get off. Watch the steps, son. Say, Gladys, I'm early for rehearsal. Let's go into the drugstore and get a sandwich. Okay. Here are two bacon stools right here, Gladys. Yeah, I'm hungry. What's on the menu? Flies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Speedy, even when you're sitting down, you're on your toes. Yeah. Well, let's see what's on the menu. Corned beef sandwich, 55 cents. Roast beef sandwich, 60 cents. Ham and cheese, 70 cents. Sardine sandwich, 15 cents. Steak sandwich, a dollar and a quarter. Hey, that sounds good. What are you going to have? A sardine sandwich. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Clark! Hey, just a minute. We're busy. Are you ready, Joe? Ready. Rubber gloves. Rubber gloves. Scalpel. Scalpel. <laughs> Tweezers. Tweezers. Hey, what are you guys doing back there? Hey, we're picking the garlic out of a salami. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can do that later. Okay. What do you have? We'll have two sardine sandwiches. Two sardine sandwiches. Would you like the domestic or the imported? Imported? Yeah, those sardines come from Sweden, Norway, and Holland. Now, where did the uh, domestic come from? Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamon. 
Oh, well, then we'll have the domestic sardines. Well, it'll take a little while. We have to cook those over a smudge pot. <laughs> Never mind the jokes. I'm in a hurry. Well, look, if you don't like the service here, go someplace else. Well, then don't tell me to go someplace else. I came in here to get a sandwich. You've got to give it to me. Can't push me around, you know. I know my right. You tell him, Speedy. You've been on the freedom train. <laughs> you said it. Now, go get our orders. Okay, okay. Well, while you're making the sardine sandwiches, I'll have a bowl of soup. What have you got? Navy bean and soup de jour. <laughs> What's the soup de jour? Navy bean. <laughs> no, well, I'll have soup de jour. I'll have navy bean. Okay. <laughs> Float the fleet and Halsey's eye wash. <laughs> Navy bean. Hey, he's new here. Oh. Well, hurry up, will you, and get our, get our sandwiches. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. I thought I'd have a bite to eat before rehearsal. Oh, good, good, kid. Here's the menu. What are you going to have? I think I'll have a roast beef sandwich and a corned beef sandwich. A roast beef sandwich and a corned beef sandwich? I've got two shows. <laughs> Imagine ordering two sandwiches just because you've got two shows. By the way, Dennis, this is Gladys Nabisco. Hello. Haven't we met before? Your legs look familiar. <laughs> Dennis, if you've met before, how come all you remember is her legs? Well, that's all I could see. She was fixing a pipe under our kitchen sink. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. In fact, I recommended her, I remember. Here you two bowls of soup. Thanks. Gee, this looks good. Hey, Speedy, look what's in my soup, a button. Well, how do you like that? Hey, waiter. Yeah? There's a button in this suit. Well, what do you want for 15 cents? A zipper? <laughs> no, I don't want a zipper, and I demand to know why there's a button in this suit. Oh, Speedy, don't argue with him. I just won't pay for my suit. No, no, Gladys, this is on me. I won't pay for it. <laughs> now, look, look, waiter. There's a roast beef sandwich and a corned beef sandwich. Who ordered it? I did. Now, what do you have to drink? Coffee, tea, and milk. Coffee, tea, and milk? I did a guest shot last week. <laughs> no. Well, come on, kids. We got to hurry, so let's... <laughs> That was a pretty good sandwich. Uh, come on, we better get over to the studio. Come on, Gladys. Right behind you, Speedy. What's the chest, folks? There's water all over the floor. Oh, yes, yes. I'm the manager. I hope you'll excuse it. One of the pipes behind the soda fountain sprung a leak. Oh, that's too bad. Come on, Gladys. I have no idea what caused it. Well, uh, mister, maybe the water's backing up because you're not getting enough air through the vent. No, I checked the vent. Gladys, come on. <laughs> on the other hand, maybe the washer in the union behind the waste trap is shot. Gladys, let's go. Well, well, I was... Uh... Uh, of course, you can't always put your finger on it, but my guess is that your inside line is corroded or the valves in the hot water intake will have to be repeated. Gladys, let's go, will you? Speedy, this is business. But this is Sunday. That's time and a half. <laughs> I know, but look uh, at... Look, the... mister, if you want, I'll be glad to check all the connections. Or even run a snake through the line and see if there's, there's any obstructions between the elbow joint and the flush out. Hmm. Well, I would appreciate if you'd fix our plumbing. That is, if your friend won't mind. Oh, I thought you knew my friend. His name is... Herman Fishback. <laughs> now, come on, Gladys, let's go. Well, it'll only take a minute, honey, my dad. You can't fix it now. Anyway, there's nothing in there but a lipstick. On the other end is a pipe wrench. Oh. <laughs> well, Gladys, when you finish the job, I'll be over at the studio. Come on, Dennis, let's go. Hey, Mr. Benny. Huh? Are you in love with Gladys Nabisco? No, no, Dennis. I wouldn't call it love. We're, we're just friends, that's all. Gee, a plumber's friend. <laughs> yeah. When did you first meet her? Oh, it was just one of those unexpected things. One day I was walking down the street, fell in an open manhole, and there she was. <laughs> You know, fate. Well, love is where you find it. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Oh, hold it, kid. We better stand here on the curb for the light changes. Hey, Emily, isn't that Jack Benny over there? Where, Martha? Standing on the corner. Why, yes, so it is. Now, he always looks so handsome. 
Those sparkling blue eyes, that manly physique, that Grecian profile, that regal poise. And when he smiles, something happens to my sacroiliac. <laughs> That's strange, Martha. I thought South America took it away. <laughs> oh, Emily, stop joking. The trouble with you is you've never been in love. Oh, no. What about Cleveland? Cleveland? What happened there? Not Ohio. Grover. <laughs> But, Emily, I always keep dreaming that someday I'll be taking an ocean voyage on the same boat with Mr. Benny, and we'll get shipwrecked, and we'll wind up alone on a desert island. Just me, Jack, and Errol Flynn. <laughs> Martha, if you're shipwrecked with Jack Benny, what do you want with Errol Flynn? What's the matter? You're crazy or something? <laughs> Carry on. Come on, Dennis. We can cross the street now. Oh, gee, I left my music in the drugstore. I'd better go back and get it. All right, kid, but hurry. Don't be late for rehearsal. Oh, I won't. There's just one place for me near you. It's like heaven to be near you. Times when we're apart, I can't face my heart. Hey, boy. Uh, Say you'll never stray more than just two lips away. Hey, Bud. Bud. Huh? This is my side of the street. <laughs> what? Unless you want to team up. No, no. <laughs> I should have taken him up. Then I'd have two shows. <laughs> nah, I'd have to play the violin and everything. Oh, well. Now, da dum, be ba boom, be boom, be da dum. What? Hmm. It was only a bottle cap. <laughs> Well, there's the studio. Good morning, Mr. Benny. Hello, Clancy. Any fan mail for me? Nope. Thank you. <laughs> He's a nice fellow. Well, I better go in and start rehearsing. <laughs> Won't you come with me to Alabama? Well, let's go see my dear old mammy. She's frying eggs and broiling okay, hamburgers. Okay, Well, okay, I got I'm stopped here. in a minute, Jackson. There, you can make no mistake. Where those nerves are never shaky. Ought to taste that layer cakey. That That's what I like about Hold it. Hold, hold it. Phil, hold it. We've got to start rehearsing. Start rehearsing? That's what I've been doing. <laughs> rehearsing? That's what I like about the South? For what? Yeah, I'm going to sing it today on your program. Oh, you are, eh? Yeah. Phil, I want to talk to you about that. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Not here. I don't want to embarrass you in front of your boys. Come on, step out in the hall. All right. Hey, I'll be back in a minute, fellas. Okay, Jackson, what is it? Not here. Let's go into my dressing room. <laughs> all right, Jackson. All right. What's on your mind? Sit down, Phil. Now, Phil, I've heard you sing, that's what I like about the South, 50 times a year for the last 12 years. And I defy you to show me where those lyrics make one bit of sense. <laughs> Jack, you cut me deeply. <laughs> I have, eh? Well, do me a favor, will you? I want you to sing. That's what I like about the South right here and now. Sing it slowly, and I'll show you how ridiculous those lyrics are. Okay. Now, go ahead. I just want to show you. Go ahead. All right. <clears throat> Won't you come with me to Alabama? Let's go see my dear old mammy. She's frying eggs and broiling hammy, and that's what all I like right, about... Well, all right, all right. Now, look. That I can understand. You have a mammy, she lives down in Alabama, and she's frying ham and eggs. Now, that's fine. That's fine. That makes sense. Now, continue. I just want to show you. Continue. There you can make no mistake where those nerves are never shaky. You ought to taste that layer cakey, and that's what all I like. All right, all right. Now, hold it. Hold it. Now, that 
I can understand a tiny bit. Somehow, your mother added a pinch of baking powder to the ham and eggs, and it turned out to be a layer cake. <laughs> layer cakey. All right, cakey. Cakey. Now go on. Now go on. I want to hear the rest. Go on. Down where they have those pretty queens, they keep on dreaming those dreamy dreams. Let's sip that absinthe in New Orleans called that. Hold it. What hold I... it. Hold it. Now wait. Wait. Hold it a minute. What's the matter? Look, at ten seconds ago, you were eating ham and eggs in Alabama. Now you're sipping absinthe in New Orleans. Certainly. Well, Phil, answer me this. If you're in Alabama, how can you sip absinthe in New Orleans? Long straw. <laughs> well, all right, Phil. I'll even go along with that. Now, continue. I'll... Here come old Roy with all the news. The box track coat and the button shoes, but he's all caught up with his union dues, and that's what I like about the South. Go on, Here come old Bob down the street. Who oh, can having a Roy? A couple of feet. He would rather sleep than eat, and that's what I like about the South. Did I tell you about the place called Duwa City? It ain't no town, and it ain't... Hold it. Hold it, Phil. Hold it. Hold it. <laughs> hold it. <laughs> I've been waiting for that. <laughs> Huh? Yep. <laughs> oh, boy. Just a minute. Oh, what's the matter? Now, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Phil. <laughs> Phil, I have the latest Rand McNally map of the United States. Here. Here, look at it. Show me one place on it called Dua Diddy. I can see Walla Walla, Ypsilanti, Astabula, Tucumcari, Nacogdoches, and even Waxahat. But where in the name of Stephen Foster is Doo Dick? <laughs> I call Petrillo. Where in the name of <laughs> Where is Doo Dick? Jackson, I just told you. You told me what? It ain't no town, it ain't no city. It's awful small, but awful pretty. Uh, do what? Now, don't describe it. Don't describe it. I mean, just tell me, is it a real place? Certainly, Jackson. It ain't just a fig leaf of my imagination. <laughs> now, fig leaf. But, Phil, just answer me one thing. Look, just answer me one thing, Phil. Look, if do wah diddy ain't no town and it ain't no city, what is it? Is it a village? Is it a hamlet? Is it a gas station? Is it a sack of Vigoro? <laughs> is it Clyde? Is it Sulfur Fireball? What is it? What is do what did it? That's all I ask. Jackson, will you... Now, wait, that's a, what is... Don't do get yourself worked up. You'll fall over. Wait a <laughs> You're going to pick everything to pieces? You've got nothing. What? Well, you can do that with any song. What do you mean? Well, take Frank Sinatra. Last night on the hit parade right here at NBC. Yeah. NBC, yeah, which yeah. is on Sunset and Vine, yeah. right in the middle of Hollywood. What does he sing? River, stay away from my door. <laughs> so what? River, stay away from my door. It ain't rained here for four months. What about yesterday? That wasn't enough to chase a jigger of bourbon. <laughs> Phil, that's a silly argument you're giving me. And anyway, what I said still goes. You're not going to sing That's What I Like About the South anymore. <laughs> on my... <laughs> anymore on my throat. Now, let's get back to rehearsal. Okay, okay. Now, where's Don Wilson? Oh, he's in dressing room D, rehearsing a quartet. Oh, well, I better go over and see how they're doing. What a song did you hear about the place called Do Wah Diddy? And here comes old Roy with a box back coat and button shoes. The shoes I can understand, but I haven't worn a box back coat in two years. <laughs> Do Wah Diddy. Well, I guess I better get in there. Yeah, Jackie. Oh, hello, Gladys. How'd you get in without a pass? They thought I was going to fix the pipe. Ah. Well, did you finish your job at the drugstore? Yes. Yeah. Well, we're rehearsing in Studio C, so... Wait a minute, Gladys. What's that on your finger? The hot water faucet. I can't get it off. Gee, I was scared. I thought we were engaged. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, well, I'll help you with it later. Now, wait for me in Studio C. I gotta go to my dressing room. Yada dee da dum da dee da dum da dum da dee da dum Hello, boss! Oh, oh, hello, Rochester. 
What are you doing here? I brought your glasses down. You left them at home, and I knew you'd need them for your show. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Rochester. Hand them to me. I'll put them on. There. Funny how I could forget my glasses. You know, I can hardly see a thing, but... Say, I wonder if that was a bottle cap. <laughs> What did you say, boy? Nothing, nothing. Oh, by the way, Rochester, I won't be home for dinner tonight. I'm going to the K. Kaiser Banquet. You know, it's the 10th anniversary on NBC. Rochester, remember when NBC gave me a 10th anniversary dinner? Yeah, I remember that night. Yeah. They served roast breast of sardines. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I got the habit, you know. <laughs> but you know, K. Kaiser's a nice fellow. He deserves a testimonial. Say, Rochester, what do you think I ought to wear tonight? My blue shirt suit or my tuxedo? You can't wear your tuxedo, boy. Somebody answered the ad you put in the paper, and I read it out this morning. <laughs> my, my tuxedo? Who'd you lend it to? Harry Kaiser. <laughs> oh, oh. I hope he's careful with it. Well, boys, I might as well get, be getting back home now. Okay. So long, Rochester. So long, boys. Now, let's see. Where are the strips? Oh, here they are. I think they're all oh, right. Oh, say, Mr. Benny. Yes, yes, I think. I meant to ask you, as long as you're not coming home for dinner, do you mind if I take the night off? No, no, I guess it'll be all right, Rochester. Why? Well, my aunt is visiting me, and I'd like to show her the town. Oh, your, uh, your aunt, eh? Yeah, she's never been to Los Angeles before. She's from way down south. Really? What part of the south? Mississippi. Mississippi, eh? What town? A uh, little place called Do Wah Diddy. <laughs> Where, where, where did you say she's from, Rochester? A little place called one? Do what, did he? Rochester, close the door. <laughs> hmm. What's the matter, boy? Rochester, are you sure your aunt lives in Do what, did he? Yes, you just package I've got under my arm. Uh-huh. It's from my Uncle Roy. <laughs> Your Uncle Roy? Uh, what What did he send you? Uh, about that coat and button shoes. <laughs> Wait a minute. Rock at this. Your Uncle Roy, who lives in Dua, did he send you a box back coat? And a pair of bunny shoes? <laughs> yeah. What's the matter, boys? You look kind of pale. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll lie down. <laughs> you and Rochester, you can have the night off if you want. Okay, boys, thanks. Oh, Ro Rochester, Rochester. Yes, sir. When you pass through the OC, tell Phil Harris it's all right for him to sing. That's what I like about the South. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I can't get over it. I just, I wonder if... I just... Hello? Public library? Miss, can you tell me, is there a little town in Mississippi called Dua Diddy? Hmm. What's the population? Hmm. No, 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 that's all. Thank you very much. Yeah, never been so embarrassed in all my life. I wouldn't blame Phil if he, if he never talked to me again. Well, I'm not going to take this line down. Hello? Rand McNally? I'm suing you. <laughs> I guess that settles that. Imagine leaving off an important place like Do Wah Diddy. Good night, folks.
Rocky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, since time immemorial, man has tried to achieve fame. We can't bring you a man who has left his footprints in the sands of time, but here's one who left his footprints on truth or consequences, the walking man, Jack Benny! <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Bing Bong Bell talking. <laughs> and John, am I glad this contest is over. For eight weeks, all I did was walk, walk, walk. Walking up and down again. Walk, walk. Walking back and forth again. Boop, boop. <laughs> walking day and night again. Boop, boop. Walk, that's all I've been doing. Jack. Walking, walking, walking. Jack, control yourself. I son. wanted to break the monotony. I tried to run. They wouldn't let me. I tried to crawl, hop, skip, jump, anything. But no, I had a walk. Walk. <laughs> I've got a bunion so big that next week it's going to have its own show. <laughs> Stella Callis. <laughs> Portia faces Dr. Soul. <laughs> oh, Dow, what I went through. Well, Jack, what are you complaining about? It was a very exciting contest. Everybody had a lot of fun, and it certainly didn't cost you anything. It didn't, eh? I wore a hole in my shoe and lost 80 cents. <laughs> Some fun. Well, what puzzles me is that with millions of people trying to guess who the walking man was, how did they manage to hide your identity? Don, you'll never know the trouble we went through to keep it a secret. Every Saturday night when Ralph Edwards went on the air, they picked me up in a big black limousine with the curtains drawn and drove me to mysterious hideouts, the loneliest places they could find where I'd be all alone. No. Yeah. <laughs> Don, hey, it was good acting. <laughs> I didn't know he could do it. <laughs> Try, say that again, Don. No. Oh. <laughs> No, John, you've never seen... Come here. Come here. You've never seen such mysterious hideout. One, one week, they took me to an old deserted house at Malibu Beach. Another time, they took me to an old abandoned stable. One night, they even took me to a theater that was showing the horn blows at midnight. <laughs> I mean, what eerie places. I've never had eight weeks of... Hello, such... Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. I was just telling Don about the walking man contest, what experiences I've had. Did you tell Don what happened last night when that lady guessed who it was, how you tried to kill yourself? Mary. Tried to kill himself? Why? Well, Jack misunderstood the rules. He thought he was supposed to get all those prizes. <laughs> I didn't want all of them. I would have been satisfied if they'd just given me that diamond ring. That thousand-dollar diamond ring. But what price is a ring, an airplane, a boat, an automobile, a, a three-room trailer? I tell you, Mary, it's a good thing the contest ended last night. Why? Because next week they were going to give away the Golden Gate Bridge, Boulder Dam, and Judy Canova. <laughs> Believe me, Mary, these last few weeks have certainly been hectic. You know, I've not only been the walking man, but I've had to make speeches at a lot of dinners. The Al Jolson dinner, Kay Kaiser, Luella Parsons. I know, Jack. I was at the Parsons dinner with you. Oh, that's right. You see how mixed up I am, Mary? I don't Say, Mary, I saw pictures of that affair in the paper, and I want to tell you that was a beautiful evening gown you were wearing. Well, thank you, Jack. You're welcome. Mary, I'm the one who complimented your dress. Why did you thank Jack? He made it. <laughs> yes, sir. Why, Jack, I didn't know you could sew. <laughs> oh, he's a dare on a singer. <laughs> You're darn right. Just give me a pattern, two yards of material, oil my bobbin, and watch me go. <laughs> but you're right. You're right, Don. Mary, Mary really did look beautiful at the Luella Parsons dinner. And, Don, you should have been there. George Jessel was master of ceremonies, and he made the funniest speech. Funny speech when got two laughs. Little ones, yes. Then Eddie Tanner got up, and he entertained for 20 minutes. Gee, was it that long? I fell asleep. <laughs> and then Bob Hope got up, and he was a riot. Some riot. 
How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob talking at the Luella Parsons Dinner Hope, telling you if you don't go to your druggist and buy pepidant, you'll have to go to your dentist and buy cuspid. <laughs> then he took out Eddie Cantor's teeth and explained the joke. What a night. Well, Jack, I don't care what you say. It was still a very swanky affair. Well, Mary, if it was such a swanky affair, you'd think they'd serve something better than bird's nest soup. That wasn't bird's nest soup. What? When you bent over to take a bow, your toupee fell in it. <laughs> oh, so that's what it was. I thought that... Hey, hey, Mary, here comes Dennis. He seems to be mumbling to himself. Yeah. I wonder what... Bing bong bell, it's ten and only one can tell. The master of the metropolis fits his... Dennis. Huh? Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. What are you doing? Promise you won't tell anybody? No. I think I know who the walking man is. <laughs> uh, you think you know who the walking man is? Yeah. Who is it? Sophie Tucker. <laughs> Dennis, what in the world makes you think it's Sophie Tucker? Well, she's the last of the Red Hot Mamas, Bing Bong Bell. All right, she's a Red Hot Mama. What's the Bing Bong Bell? Fire engine. <laughs> oh, Dennis, look, in the first place, a walking man is a man. In the second place, it was guessed last night by a woman. Let's see, what was her name again? Sophie Tucker. No! <laughs> it was won by a lady in Chicago named Florence Hubbard. And the walking man is me. What's the second name? Who? Me. Put that up. <laughs> and if you'd have been here at the start of the program, you'd know what I'm talking about. Where were you? Oh, I'm sorry I was late, but I was out buying myself a car. A car? But, Dennis, you just bought a new car last month. I know. I traded it in for a used car. <laughs> Wait a minute, kid. Why, why should you trade in a brand new car and drive around in a used car? Oh, I want people to think I have money. <laughs> Oh, boy, did I put it over on that dealer. He gave me a 39 Plymouth, and I stuck him with my 47 Cadillac. Dennis, what was wrong with the Cadillac? It was out of gas. <laughs> well, Dennis, you sure did put it over on him. Yeah, and all I have to pay is $40 a month. $40 a month? How long do you have to pay them? 1,200 months. <laughs> well, for heaven's Dennis, 1,200 months, that's 100 years. By the time you finish paying, you'll be over 120 years old. Well, that's not bad for a kid my age. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, Dennis, before you sing your song, I want to ask you... No, no, forget it. Go ahead and sing. Jack, what are we going to ask him? Well, I was going to ask him... No, no, go ahead and sing, kid. Jack, I don't know what it is, but go ahead, ask him. Oh, all right. Dennis, in this deal you made with that used car dealer, what happens if you fail to keep up the payment? Well, then my other program will be called A Day in the Life of Honest John. <laughs> Sing, Dennis. Okay. You think after eight years I'd know enough to keep my mouth? <laughs> that was What'll I Day sung by Dennis Do. I mean, what I so mixed up today, isn't it? Dennis, you may be kind of silly sometimes about the things you say, but when you sing, your, your voice is simply beautiful. I mean, it has a quality that seems to improve week after week. That's awfully nice of you to say that, kid. <laughs> kid? I'm 120 years old. All right. <laughs> that kid gets on one subject. <laughs> Oh, you, you can't get him off of it for... Oh, hello, Phil. Never mind that hello, Jackson. I want to have a little talk with you. Why? What's the matter, Phil? Plenty's the matter, Jackson. How you live? <laughs> well, what? You listen to me. Yeah? Last week you gave me that cross-examination about that's what I like about the South, and now I'm... Phil, we're doing a program. That can wait till we're finished. No, it can't, Dad. <laughs> Last week you kept picking on my song and picking on it and picking on it, and when I went home, well, 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 I did something I haven't done in a long time. What was that? I cried. <laughs> mm. 
Well. <laughs> the last time you cried was in 1920 when they voted prohibition. Would you two mind telling me what this is all about? Mary, it's nothing. Oh, it ain't, huh? You weren't here, Livy. But last week, Jackson told me that the words to that's what I like about the South didn't make sense. And then he even had the nerve to say that there wasn't a town called do what did he? No. Hey, you're as good as Don Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Phil. After the program... We're going to talk about it right now. Huh? Now, I had Alice look do what did he up in the encyclopedia, and she wrote down the whole history of the town. Now, here, Libby, read it to him. Well, why don't you read it yourself? This is in handwriting, Liv. I'm only a print man. (laughs) Okay. I'll read it. I went to college. I can read both. Look, Mary, we haven't got... Quiet, Jack. You've got this coming to you. Do our ditty, Mississippi. Duar Diddy is a town located in the southern part of the state, hmm. at the foot of the Wadu Diddy Mountains, and on the banks <laughs> and on the banks of the Diddy Wadu River. <laughs> Diddy Wadu. This river is famous because it runs backwards. <laughs> oh, oh, now let's get on with the program. Now wait a minute, wait a minute. Let her read it, Jackson. Go on, go on, Libby. The principal industry of Duar Diddy is the manufacturing of box back coats and button shoes. <laughs> Hmm. This town also plays an important part in American history. It is famous because the Seminole Iroquois battles were fought there. Abraham Lincoln opened his presidential campaign there. And the town is also mentioned in that famous folk song, That's What I Like About the South. Uh, folk song? Hey, Jackson. What? No. <laughs> all right, Phil, all right. So there is such a town. But how did you happen to pick do wah Diddy to put in your song? Frankie, my guitar player, was born there. He told me what a wonderful place it is. Well, it's such a wonderful place. How come Frankie left it? Well, Jackson, he didn't exactly leave. You see, one dark night, they took him to the city limits, put him on the main highway, faced him towards the west, and gave him a hint to leave town. A hint? They said his pants on fire. <laughs> no! went through Kansas like Haley's Comet. <laughs> Phil, that was 15 years ago. I know that tar is hard to get off, but at least Frankie can remove the feathers. He looks like a seagull sitting there. <laughs> now, come on, let's get out Wait of here. Not so fast, Jackson. Take it easy. Now, look, Alice told me to say that unless a retraction is forthcoming from you, our association must be terminated. <laughs> Alice told you to say that? Yeah. What does it mean? <laughs> it means that I have to apologize to you, and this whole silly thing started out. Jack, with a... why do you and Phil keep arguing over that song? It's such a simple thing to settle. All right, Phil, if you want to apologize, me to apologize to you, I do. Do you accept the apology? I do. I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> Look. We're not getting married. Think of the children. Oh, shut up! <laughs> and Phil, now that I've apologized, I hope you're satisfied. I'm happy if you are, walking man. Oh, you heard the truth of consequences last night. What do you mean, last night? I knew it was you the minute I heard your footsteps. You know, there's only one thing that threw me. What? I couldn't hear your cane. <laughs> Well, I've got news for you, Phil. They wanted you to be the walking man, but they could never find you in that position. (laughs) Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. (laughs) Take it, Mary. Here, boy, here's something for you. But, Mr. Benny, this shoe's got a hole in it. Just take it. There's 20 cents in the lining there. Now go. Mary, who's the telegram from? Fred Allen. From Fred Allen? What does he say? Uh, dear Jack, you may be happy to know that when the contest first started, I knew it was you. I can recognize the heel whether he's talking or walking. (laughs) 
How do you like that? Wait a minute, there's more. Yeah? I have something else I can call you, but if I put it in the telegram, they'll fade your program. <laughs> Two jokes in a row. He must have called in a writer. <laughs> you know, Mary, the only reason Alan sent me that wire is that he's jealous of everything that happens to me. Anything I do, he makes an issue out of it. He doesn't like the way I play my violin. On that issue, even the Democrats are united. Democrats, Democrats, Democrats. Some hey, joke. that's it. What? If it isn't Sophie Tucker, it's Henry Wallace. Oh. Jen, <laughs> I try to tell you that the walking man has been guessed already. It's me. Now, you don't have to try and guess it anymore. The whole thing is over. It's finished. Oh, there's the phone. Hello? Hello, Master. This is the Metropolis. <laughs> Rochester. I was worried about you, boss. You didn't come home last night. Well, I couldn't help it. Because of the contest, I had to stay up all night with my writers and rewrite my program for today. Did you write an apart for me? No. Then what am I doing on the phone? <laughs> I don't know. You called me. Okay, then I'll hang up. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Rochester. Are you listening to the program? Uh-huh. Well, we had to stay up all last night and write it. How does it sound? Do you want the truth or the consequences? <laughs> Look, never mind. I'll find out after the show. So long, Rochester. Goodbye. Oh, oh, say, wait a minute. Have there been any phone calls for me today? Boss, the phone's been ringing all day. All day long, people have been calling up to congratulate you. For being the walking man? Oh, for being able to walk. <laughs> Now, stop with the joke. Uh, by the way, boss, I got the garage all cleaned out. The furniture moved out of the living room and the front door wide open. When does the truck come? The truck? Oh, Rochester, we were mistaken about that. <laughs> I found out that I don't get those prizes. You see, they go to the winner of the contest. You mean we ain't going to get that airplane? No. Or the boat? No, I'm afraid not, Roger. The trailer? No, I'm sorry. And we even going to spend those two glorious weeks together in Sun Valley? <laughs> no, all those prizes go to Florence Hubbard of Chicago, Illinois. Oh, then that explains the letter I found on your dresser. Letter? Now, here it is. It's in your handwriting, and it says, My dear Miss Hubbard, I'm six foot two, have broad shoulders, blonde, wavy hair, blue eyes, and friends compare me with Van Johnson. Rochester. I'm single, congenial, companionable, and dance divinely. Rochester. Oh, we'll meet you at the train. Understand you already have the ring. (laughs) Rochester. Hey, boys. What? You want me to finish this for you? How would you know what to say? Oh, I'll check out some of the things you wrote in that other letter. Which letter? The one you wrote to the lady who won the Irish sweet <laughs> Roger, there won't be necessary to send any letter. Florence Hubbard, the winner of the Walking Man contest, is going to be on my program next Sunday, and so is Ralph Edwards. Good, good. Uh, by the way, boys, those contests are wonderful. Why don't you have one and give away prizes? Oh, I don't know, Rochester. What kind of prizes could I give? Well, you could give away your car, your uh. violin, an old toupee, and two glorious weeks at two our city. <laughs> Say, that's a pretty good idea. I'll think it over. So long, Rochester. Goodbye, boss. Gee, I hope Florence is cute. <laughs> and on my program next week, our guests will be Florence Hubbard, the winner of the Walking Man contest, and Ralph Edwards. Mary, I've done so much walking with this contest. How about you and me going for a ride up to Mulholland Drive? And, you know, and, and park. No, thanks. The last time I did that, I became the walking lady. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Good night. program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as an emergency measure, at 2 o'clock this morning, the state of California went on daylight savings time, which means that in California, we started the day an hour earlier. This sudden change has even upset the barnyard animals. For this morning, when I opened my bedroom window at 5 o'clock, which was really 4 o'clock, 
I heard... What a shame. It's their first argument since they appeared on Bride and Groom. <laughs> Continue, Don. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the change of time has certainly been confusing. So now we bring you a man who gets five o'clock shadow with his four o'clock tea, Jack Benny. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don... Now, what is the reason for this sudden change of time here in California? Well, Jack, because of the drought, there's been a power shortage, and the extra hour of daylight saves millions of kilowatt hours of electricity. Kilowatts? Yes. <laughs> yes, you see, we've had practically no rain, and it takes millions of tons of water rushing through the penstocks to turn the turbines which generate electricity. It is then run through the giant transformers in which it is converted into alternating current, and this current is sent throughout the state on a complicated network of cables. Well, <laughs> imagine them going through all that trouble just so Rochester can burn my toast in the morning. <laughs> but, Don, this drought has really been something. I don't ever remember it being so dry out. Well, listen, this you'll never believe. I mean, this sounds incredible. But it's been so dry... Last week, I passed a citrus grove, and I saw an orange sucking a lemon. <laughs> you know, the rain today nearly spoiled that joke. <laughs> you know, we nearly took it out. <laughs> but anyway, Don, I like the idea of broadcasting at 5 o'clock instead of 4, because it gives us more time. Well, say, Mr. Benny, I heard you and Don talking oh, about... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Say, Mr. Benny, I heard you and Don talking oh, did about... did you just get here? Get here. Yeah, I heard you and Don talking about daylight savings time, and I'm in favor of it. Well, I'm glad you are, Dennis. You see, it, it gives us an extra hour of daylight every day. Yeah, I got up at 2 o'clock this morning, and I turned my watch ahead 365 hours. What? I'm set, I'm set for the whole year. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you glad you made me repeat that, huh? <laughs> but Dennis, Dennis, look at me. I want to ask you one thing. Why do you have to be so silly? I mean, you, you're not a kid anymore. Look, you're approaching manhood. I am? <laughs> Certainly. And you have responsibilities. Look, at Dennis, I really wanted to talk to you. Like, when I was your age, I was serious-minded, settled. I was supporting my family. I'd get up at 4 o'clock in the morning on a cold, wintry day, pack my own lunch, and trudge 12 miles through the snow looking for work. Any kind of work. Selling paper, shoveling coal, digging ditches, anything. And at night, with the pennies I had earned clenched in my little fist. <laughs> clenched in my little fist. I would drag my weary body home. And it was because of my efforts that my loved ones, my family, we're able to keep body and soul together through that dreadful winter. What do you think of that? That was pretty good, but I still think they'll give it to Ronald Coleman. <laughs> Dennis, I was just telling you the story of my life. I wasn't trying to get an Academy Award. I didn't even make a picture, so I'm not eligible to win it. Oh, you're just being modest. I'm not being modest. I didn't make a picture last year. If I had made one, then I would be eligible to win the award. What a ham. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake. I don't know why I get into these things. Oh, speaking of pictures, Jack, I saw a great one last night. Really, Don? What'd you see? The Naked City. Ooh, what he said. <laughs> well, that does it. Mary, have you ever heard anyone so ridiculous? Mary, I'm talking to you. Jack, I don't come in till the next page. Well, come in now. I can't stand any more of this. <laughs> okay. Hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Hey, fellas, <laughs> look who's here. Mary. <laughs> What? I'm all mixed up now. How come we're broadcasting at 3 o'clock instead of 4? We're not broadcasting at 3 o'clock. Look, at it's 5 o'clock. You see, you're supposed to set your watch ahead. Ahead? Certainly. See, the idea is to get an extra hour of daylight, and the purpose of that is to conserve electricity. You see, there's been a drought, and it takes millions of tons of water rushing through the penstocks to turn the turbines which generate the electricity. It is then run through a giant... <laughs> ah, shut up! <laughs> 
Now, Stuart, you were employed on this program to read one line at the opening of the show, and that's all. I could have got a real chicken, but they wanted 90 cents a pound. <laughs> now, please don't interrupt again. $643.70. Dennis, what are you figuring? Don Wilson at 90 cents a pound. <laughs> Dennis, go, Don, go sit on Dennis for a while so we can get on with the show, will you? Say, Jack, are you having the winner of the Walking Man contest on the program today? Yes, Mary. Ralph Edwards is going to bring her over later. Well, good, because I got a letter from Mom, and she says she's going to listen. Oh, a letter from your mother? Yeah. Here it is, right here. Well, what does the fearless Fosdick of Plainfield have to say? <laughs> I'll read it to you. <clears throat> <clears throat> My darling daughter, Mary... Just a short note to tell you how thrilled we all were to find that Jack was the walking man when I heard the news. I got so excited that the cow is now wearing four Band-Aids. Oh, the poor thing. I should have realized Jack was the walking man as soon as I heard that clue where he played the violin. Oh. It sounded like a cat who already lost eight lives and didn't have a nickel to call Northside 777. <laughs> Mary, you, your mother can put a Band-Aid on that <laughs> gag, too. Right? So much for this Jack. This show was written in do wa I think. <laughs> so much for Jack. Now, here's the latest family news. Your sister, Babe, has been studying dramatics, and this Wednesday she will have an important part in the annual St. Patrick's Day play. Oh, Babe. The play will open with St. Patrick chasing Babe out of Ireland. <laughs> Say, Babe should be good in that part. She never did have hips, you know. <laughs> yeah, this part doesn't give Babe any lines to read, but she'll have a chance to hiss back at the audience. Good, good. <laughs> no other news except we had to take your Uncle Harry to a psychiatrist, as he thinks he's an avocado. <laughs> Every time I make a salad, he jumps in the bowl. What? <laughs> Once he did it without dressing. Mary! <laughs> Salad dressing, that uh, is. Your Uncle Harry is really a character. I remember last year he thought he was a tube of shaving cream. Every time he left the house, he wanted you to screw his cap on. <laughs> what a guy. So we're closed now. With all my love to you, your mother, Mama. Well, I'm glad that's over. <laughs> now, come on, Dennis. It's time for your song. What are you going to sing? Well, since Wednesday is St. Patrick's Day, I'm going to sing McNamara's Band. Good, good. Go ahead. That was McNamara's band sung by that wee broth of a lad, Dennis Day. And Dennis, me by, sure and be God, I'm proud of you, lad, as I am of me father, Shillelagh. But Dennis, seriously, I want to congratulate you and all the Irish on St. Patrick's Day. Thank you, and a good yontif to you, too. <laughs> what? The Zion mit Glick in the Ich will the Zion später der Jarten der. Thank you, Dennis. And now... Oh, hold it, kids. Come in. Hey, Mr. Benny. Yes? I'm here to inform you that the results of Radio Mirror Magazine's nationwide poll have been tabulated, and you've won the title of America's favorite comedian. Well, thank you. Don't thank me. I voted for Mary's mother. <laughs> what? You're about as funny as an eviction notice. <laughs> Look, all right, you came here, you told me I won the award, now you can go. Yeah, just a minute. Is Don Wilson around? Why, yes. He's... Hey, wait a minute. Ask me that again, will you? Yeah, I said, is Don Wilson around? He's not only around, but he's a firm and a fully packed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, you may not be the walking man, but you step right into that one. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, mister, what are you doing? I'm setting my watch back an hour. I was happier then. Now may I see Mr. Wilson Oh, Don, come here a minute oh, yeah, Yes, what is it, Jack? Uh, Mr. Wilson, on behalf of Radio Mirror Magazine I want to congratulate you on being voted America's favorite radio announcer Little old me? Yes, little fat old you <laughs> uh, The plaque we're presenting to you reads First prize awarded to Don Wilson Because of perfect diction and flawless enunciation Well, gosh, who won second prize? Speedy Rig. <laughs> The Effie Boone will be heartbroken. Uh, now, Mr. Benny, yeah. while I'm here, I'd like to take some pictures of the lady who won the walking man contest. Well, Ralph Edwards was supposed to bring her over, and they're not here yet. I can't understand what's keeping them. I better call up and see. So, 
my maple. What is it, Gaitfield? <laughs> Mr. Benny's line is flourishing. I wonder what high button shoes wants now. <laughs> well, answer it and find out. I'm loosening my girdle. You answer it. Okay. Hello? Hello, Mabel? Now, this is Gertrude. Right now, Mabel is loosening her... Gertrude! <laughs> Gerda, will you try to get me Ralph Edwards, please? Just a moment. He wants I should get him Ralph Edwards. It's a good thing he talked to you. I'd have hung up on him. Why? Why? Jack took me out once, and when we got home, he didn't even kiss me goodnight. I can't understand it. I even brought my lips up close to him like this. Well, no wonder he didn't kiss you. What? I've seen a better pucker on a clothes laundry bag. <laughs> well, maybe it's because I don't paint my lips up so good. You know, it's hard with a thin brush. I think I'll start using a rubber stamp like you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you gotta be careful. Once at the office, I was in a hurry to make up. I grabbed the wrong stamp and my lips said... Fragile, this end up. <laughs> anyway, I don't care what you say, Mabel. To me, Mr. Benny has a very sweet personality. Well, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. That's why you find so many things in fruitcake. <laughs> oh, that's a fine way to talk about Mr. Benny. Especially now that he's famous as a walking man. What's so wonderful about that? He was walking when Paul Revere was riding. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? Operator, operator. I'm sorry, Mr. Benny, but Ralph Edwards doesn't answer. All right, thanks. Jack, wasn't Ralph Edwards home? No, but we finally got to use that telephone routine we've been saving since Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Four times we rehearsed it and had to take it out. Huh? <laughs> anyway, Ralph will be down here. And Don, until he gets here, he might as well... Oh, hello, Phil. Hello, Jackson. How you live? <laughs> I'm sorry I'm late, Jackson, but this change of time got me all mixed up. Well, Phil, that's ridiculous. All you had to do was set your watch ahead an hour. Well, that ain't easy for me. You see, my watch has got four hands. Four hands? Sure. Here, I'll show it to you. Take a look at... How do you like that? I saw four hands last night. <laughs> That I can understand. Phil, are those your eyes, or are you trying to flag down a freight train? <laughs> anyway, the change of time is no excuse. You've been with me for 12 years, and not once have you been on time for rehearsal. Jackson, if you had a band as lousy as mine, you wouldn't even get here for the show. <laughs> well, Phil, now that you really admit that what your band sounds like, why don't you let them go? I can't, Jackson. Can't do it. i got to deal with Petrillo where I have to take all the in-between musicians. In-between musicians? Yeah, when they're through with Guy Lombardo and not quite ready for Forest Lawn, I get them. <laughs> What a combination, Guy Lombardo and Forrest Lawn. <laughs> Phil, Phil, who makes their arrangements? Digger Odell. <laughs> oh, stop with those jokes. What do you Look. mean, jokes? There. Look what it says on the music. Where? Well, I'll be darned. May you rest 16 bars in peace. <laughs> Well, Phil, whether you like your orcs or not, we have to have a band number, so hit it, will you? <laughs> hey, what's that now? I just did that to wake up the audience. Well, Mr. Blank, you don't have to wake up the audience. You were hired just to do one crow at the opening of the program. You can go home now. But I'm talented. I can do a lot of things. Look, will a you A dog, a horse, a pig. Look, mister. <laughs> Look, I don't want all of them. I also imitate an electric organ. What? <laughs> Now, cut that out. You know? <laughs> That's all, folks. <laughs> Come on, Phil. Let's have a Why don't you let me know? I wish somebody would let me know these things. <laughs> well, unclutch your fist. <laughs> that was I'm looking over a four leaf clover played by Phil Harris, and as Ireland must be heaven because you can't hear his music there, orchestra. <laughs> And now, folks... Hey, Jack. Jack, your guests have arrived. My guests? Yeah. Oh, good, good. I'll introduce them. Ladies and gentlemen, it isn't often that we have guest stars on this program. And for a very good reason. They, they cost, cost money. money. Besides that. 
But tonight it gives me great pleasure to introduce the master of ceremonies of radio's number one quiz show and the originator of the Walking Man Contest. Here he is, Ralph Edwards. Hi, Truth. Hello, Consequence. <laughs> well, Ralph, I was worried that you wouldn't get here, so I called your house, but nobody answered. I can't understand it. Oh, but, Jack, there was nobody in my house, so my phone couldn't be answered. Funny, I thought does does everything. <laughs> Uh, maybe it was in the washing machine at the time. Maybe, but I'm sure glad you got here, Ralph. Well, so am I, Jack, because I want to take this opportunity of thanking you again for your splendid cooperation in the Walking Man contest, which raised over a million dollars. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> to be exact, we raised almost... Whoops, whoops. Yes. Oh, two million. Oh, good. <laughs> and all this money, Jack, went to the American Heart Association. Well, that's certainly a worthy cause. Say, Ralph, do you mind if I ask you a question? I know, Mary. What is it? Well, in your four contests, Mr. Hush, Mrs. Hush, Miss Hush, and the Walking Mush, I mean... <laughs> I mean, Mash, I mean, Mish, that, the, the Walking, walking Man. man. The walking... Uh, what was the total value of all the prizes given away? Oh, I'd say around $100,000. Gee. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, since I've been running these contests, I've been the happiest guy in the world. I only wish I could give more prizes. Give me such a wonderful feeling, giving things away. Well, to each his own. <laughs> but Ralph, Ralph, while you're on the subject uh, of money, don't you think I should receive something for my efforts on your program the last eight weeks? Well, Jack, I know it was for charity, Ralph, but for eight weeks I walked and walked and walked. Yeah, I know, Jack, and I have here a check for you for $6.30. Six dollars and thirty cents? How'd you arrive at that figure? Uh, Fifteen cents for the first quarter mile and twenty cents a mile thereafter. <laughs> well, that's why you strapped that meter on my back. If I'd have known that, I'd have taken longer steps, you know. Jack, I don't know. I, I should put on that straw hat for yeah. that joke, you know. What I mean? <laughs> no, but I can't understand you at all. I always thought it was just a gag, but it, it seems the only thing you can think of is money. So what, Ralph? There's nothing wrong with liking money. Oh, but Jack, think of it this way. Money isn't everything. Supposing you were the only person in the whole world, and all the diamonds, all the wealth, all the gold was yours. Now, wouldn't you be lonely? Lonely but loaded. <laughs> I'd be so nice to come home to. <laughs> well, I may as well get to the real reason for my being here today. I brought along as my special guest tonight... Uh, Mrs. Florence Hubbard of Chicago. May I introduce her to you and your listeners? Certainly, Ralph. Go right ahead. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to present the winner of the Walking Man Contest, Mrs. Florence Hubbard of Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Hubbard, I want to welcome you to this program. Thank you, Mr. Benny. You know, I read in the paper that after you won the Walking Man contest, all your old friends, people you haven't heard from in years, came around to see you. That's right. Gee, that must have been thrilling. Who was the very first person to visit you after you won? The income tax man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'll bet. I'll bet after the income tax man got there, Mrs. Hubbard's cupboard was bare. <laughs> For that, I left Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, Miss Hubbard, uh, how did you discover that Jack was the walking man? It was simple. The footsteps were familiar. You mean you've heard his footsteps before? No, but I realized they were made by a person around my own age. <laughs> now, just a second, uh, Mrs. Hubbard, uh, how, how old are you? Thirty-nine. <laughs> Thirty-nine? Gee, you look a little older. I am. But, <laughs> but they gave me a new birth certificate as one of the prizes. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> you know, this is really quite a coincidence. I happen to be 39 years old myself. Really? What contest did you win? <laughs> no, no contest. You see, that's really my age. But you look much... Uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Hubbard, uh, remember you're a guest here. Yes, yeah, yeah. Now, Mrs. Hubbard, tell me, were you born in Chicago? Uh, no, 
I was born in the South. Really? Where? A little place called Duwad City. <laughs> Now that you've had all this good luck, I suppose you'll be thinking of getting married again, huh? Won't you? No. Now that I've all these prizes, I feel that I don't need anyone. But <laughs> but won't you be lonely? Lonely, but loaded. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Ralph Edwards and Mrs. Hubbard for being with us today. Mrs. Hubbard appeared to the courtesy of uh, Carson Peary and Scott. <laughs> also on our program tonight were Mel Blank, Frank Nelson, B. Benadaret, Sarah Berner, Blanche Stewart. I appeared to the courtesy of Penicillin tonight. Good night. <laughs> this is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs> The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, today is March 21st. So with spring officially here, let's go out to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills where we find Rochester doing the spring house cleaning. Well, I got the table dusted. <laughs> Quiet, Polly. Now I better go in the next room and... Uh-oh, I forgot to clean under the piano. Well, I'll just take my mop, reach under there, and swish it around. Hmm. It's amazing how so many things can collect under a piano in such a short time. Hmm. What's this? A newspaper. January 16th, 1943. And look at that headline. Jack Benny recaptures Guadalcanal. <laughs> 1943. That's the year I gave him that printing press for Christmas. <laughs> well, it's getting kind of late. I better go and see if Mr. Benny wants some lunch. Embrace me, my sweet embraceable you. Embrace me, you irrepressible you. Uh, just one look at you, my heart grew tipsy in me. <laughs> You and you alone bring out the gypsy in me. I love all the many charms about you. Above all, above all, above all, uh, I want my arms about you. I hate to disturb him while he's counting his money. <laughs> Go on, shake the dust out of this mop. I beg your pardon, Rochester. Huh? Would you mind shaking that mop in the other direction? You're getting dust on Mr. Coleman's petunias. Oh, I'm sorry, Sherwood. I hope I didn't dirty your windows. Oh, I don't think so. And besides, it doesn't matter. Mr. Coleman told me I didn't have to start the spring cleaning until tomorrow. He knew I was too excited to work today. Excited? Yes, haven't you heard? We won the Academy Award. <laughs> oh, yes. We weren't even invited. <laughs> but congratulations, Sherwood. Uh, thank you. Uh, would you like me to autograph your mop? <laughs> no, thanks. Rochester! Uh-oh. I have to go now. And Sherwood, I want to tell you, I was very glad to hear the good news about Mr. Coleman winning the award. Uh, so was I. You know, that means another raise for me. A raise? Oh, yes. When he made Lost Horizon, he gave me a raise. Uh, when he made Random Harvest, he gave me another raise. The late George Apley didn't hurt either. And now that he's made a double life, I've been catapulted into the upper bracket. <laughs> well... My salary stayed the same through Charlie's aunt to be or not to be, and George Washington slept here. <laughs> then he made the horn blows at midnight, and brother, can you spare a dime? <laughs> Rochester! 
sir. Where are you? Coming, boss. Excuse me, Sherwood. I have to go in now. Uh, cheerio. Well, hello, boss. Would you like me to get you some lunch? Well, I don't know. What have we got, Rochester? Oh, I'll take a look in, on the icebox. Well, let's see. We've got some cold boars, cheese blintzes, sour cream, bagel, and matzo balls. <laughs> boars, bagels, and matzo balls? Yeah, we had them left over from St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, on second thought, Rochester, I'm not very hungry. You better eat something, boss. You know you have to speak at that club meeting tonight. Oh, I'll get something later, but I'm glad you reminded me about the meeting. I'm going in the den and jot down some more notes for my speech there. There's somebody at the back door. I'll get it. Embrace me, my sweet embraceable you. Embrace me, da 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 da. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Come on in. Why don't you come around the back door? Well, now that the weather's so nice, I thought you'd be out in the patio relaxing. And uh, say, Jack, why don't you get this new Bendix? Oh, a few days ago. How come you noticed it so quickly? The well, last time I was here, you only had four of them. Well, they look nice, don't they? Huh? Yeah, but don't you think you ought to put them in the living room? Washing machines in the living room? If people pay you a quarter to use them, you can at least make them comfortable. <laughs> Mary, when you give them soap free, they're happy. They don't care. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Would you like me to fix you a sandwich or something? No, thanks, Rochester. I'm not hungry. I don't know what it is, but today I haven't any appetite at all. Oh, I guess it's the time of the year. Yeah. Spring. There's something in the air that seems to... Oh, gosh, I don't know. Isn't that funny, Mary? I've been feeling the same way. But then it's only natural, you know. In the spring, a young man's fancy lightly turns to thoughts of... Isn't that cute, Mary? Rochester tipped out of the room so, so we could be alone. <laughs> well, if you tiptoe back in again and get that glint out of your eye. <laughs> it's not a glint, it's that Oxidol sparkle. <laughs> Embrace me, my sweet embrace, Sibergio. Jack. <laughs> embrace me, you embrace, Sibergio. Jack, what? look at Polly. She's singing, counting her birdseed. That's funny. <laughs> I wonder where she picked that up. Say, Mary, you sure you don't want any lunch? No, Jack. The reason I came over today is to ask you if you'd like to take me... Oh, pardon me, Mary. There's someone at the door. Yes? Is this 700 North Rexford? Yes, yes. Well, I came over to... Oh, yes, yes, of course. Come right in. Go right through the kitchen and use the one on the end. It's brand new. <laughs> and you'll find soap in the barrel. <laughs> now, what were you saying, Mary? I said... Uh. I said the reason I came over today is to ask you if you'd like to go to a preview with me tonight. Tonight? Oh, gosh, Mary, I'd love to, but I have to make a very important speech at a club meeting. It's an organization here in Beverly Hills, and they invited me to be the guest speaker. Oh. So I won't be able to take you to the preview tonight. Oh, that's all right, Jack. I guess I'll just have to go with Tyrone Power. Well, you should have let me know sooner. Or say, maybe I can take you. I'll call the club. You touch that phone or I'll break your arm. <laughs> You had a lot of nerve leading me on like that. Well, when did you make this date with Tyrone Power? Well, he asked me last night when I met him at the Academy Award ceremonies. Oh. And, Jack, you should have been there. When Ronald Coleman was called up on the stage to receive the Oscar, he made a beautiful speech. And he was so gracious and modest. Well, Mary, that's as it should be. I remember, I was modest when, when I got the Oscar. What? I can still see that headline. Jack Benny wins Academy Award. Jack, when was that? The year I gave him that printing press for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. I would have been elected president, too, but I ran out of ink. Anyway, I'm glad Ronnie won it. Come in! Oh, it's you, Dennis. Come on in, sit down. I can't stay, Mr. Benny. I just came over because I've got something very important to talk to you about. To me? Well, kid, if you have anything on your mind, say it. But this is confidential. Can we talk in the other room? Oh, sure, sure. Excuse us, Mary. Oh, that's all right. She can come along. <laughs> but, Dennis, you said it was confidential. If it's confidential, it should be between two people. Oh. Then you and Mary go in the other room, and I'll stay here. 
Okay, but Dennis, stop mixing me up. You came in to tell me something. Now, what is it? Well, I don't know how to say it, but... But... But what? My mother doesn't like your program, and she wants me to quit your show. <laughs> your... Your mother wants you to quit? Yeah. What does she like about my program? You. <laughs> Me? Every time you say hello again, you ought to see the veins in her neck stick out. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Mary, you talk to him, will you? Not me. I'm enjoying this. You would. Dennis, you can go back and tell your mother that whether she likes me personally or not, you have a contract with me. He's got two years to run. Gee, two years. I don't think her neck will make it. <laughs> I don't care if it does or not. Now, come on. I want to hear the song you prepared for the program. Well, what am I going to tell my mother? You don't have to tell her anything. I'll go over and talk to her. Gee, if my father was as brave as you, my mother would kill him. I would be a bit surprised. Now, let's hear your song. Okay. Can't understand why his mother doesn't like me. I'm so gracious and modest, you know? <laughs> Dennis, that's a beautiful song. It'll sound swell on the program. Gee, thanks. By the way, Dennis, I heard you sing at the Academy Award ceremonies last night, and your voice was never better. The audience thought you were wonderful. Then why did they give the award to Ronald Coleman? <laughs> Dennis, go get a bagel out of the icebox and roll it around the block, will you? Why do you all... Mary, answer the phone, will you? Okay. Hello? Hello. Hey, is that you, luscious Libby? <laughs> yeah. Hello, Phil. Hi, you, Liv. Hey, what's going on at Jackson's house? I passed there a little while ago, and there were big searchlights all over the place. What's the celebration? A new washing machine. <laughs> A new washing machine? Well, rub-a-dub-dub. -dub. <laughs> Phil, you want to speak to Jack? Yes, yeah, the old gentleman at home. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, prop him up and hold the receiver for him. <laughs> okay. Here you are, Jack. Thanks. Hello? Hello, Wong Fu. How's your hot water holding up? <laughs> Never mind, Phil. What'd you call me about? Oh, I got good news, Jackson. I'm going on a fishing trip tonight, and I thought maybe you'd like to go with me. I'd love to, Phil, but I got to make a speech tonight at a very important meeting. Ah, oh, it's too bad. I hate to go fishing by myself. Why'd you take Frankie with you? Nah, 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 you don't. The last time I went fishing with Frankie, he spoiled the whole trip. Really? Yeah, there we were out on the lake, and Frankie wanted some sunshine, so he took his shirt off and let it fall in the water, and it sank to the bottom. All right, so Frankie dropped his shirt in the water. How'd that ruin your trip? The corkscrew was in his pocket. <laughs> My, what a disaster. <laughs> Certainly. There we were with all them fish to eat and nothing to float them down with. Well, I can't understand you. Even on a fishing trip, you've got to take a bottle along. Well, we just take it for emergencies, you know, to prevent colds. Like in case it rains, if we get all wet, then we uh, take a little nip. <laughs> Only, only when you get wet, eh? Yeah, but in case it don't rain, we push each other out of the boat. <laughs> what? Jack, what are you talking about? Oh, Phil wants me to go fishing. That's how my father met my mother. What? Yeah, my mother was a hostess on a live bait barge. <laughs> Quiet. Hey, how about it, Jackson? Do you want to go fishing with me? <laughs> hey, uh, you better think it over. We might catch a mermaid. A mermaid? You know, one of them things that's half dame and half halibut. <laughs> Oh, Phil, stop with the jokes. You know that a mermaid is a myth. Well, myth or myth is if I catch one, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harris, you're just like a catfish. All mouth and no mind. <laughs> that I won't argue with. Well, do whatever you want, Phil. I can't go. Okay, so long, Jackson. So long, Phil. Hey, Phil, wait a minute. Yeah? If you happen to catch one, ask her if she's got a friend for me. Oh, Dad, you're a clip. <laughs> so long, Jackson. So long. Boss, you better hurry or you'll be late for that meeting. Oh, yes, yes. So long, fellas. Goodbye, Mary. I hate to go, but this meeting is important. <laughs> weekly meeting of the Beverly Hills Beavers is now in session. <laughs> the secretary will read the minutes of the last meeting. Go ahead, Joey. Yes, Mr. President. 
Last week's meeting of the Beavers was called to order by Stevie, our president. And the first motion put before the Beavers was resolved. The Constitution of the Beavers shall be amended so that we shall refuse membership to girls, communists, and little brothers. <laughs> this was passed unanimously. The meeting was interrupted by Cliff coming in late. Just a minute, Mr. Secretary. Cliff, why were you late to last week's meeting? My mother had a baby and I had to take care of my father. <laughs> That's a good excuse, but don't let it happen again. <laughs> uh, proceed with the minutes, Mr. Secretary. The most important business of last week's meeting was the holding of our presidential election. Stevie nominated Joy for president, Joy nominated Willie, and Willie nominated MacArthur. <laughs> but Stevie was elected president, and the meeting was then adjourned. Are there any amendments to the minutes? Minutes accepted as read. Is there any new business? Yes, Cliff. Mr. President, I would like to say something in connection with my office's keep of the club mascot, Plinky, our white mouse, who died two months ago. <laughs> yes, Cliff, what's the motion? Well, my mother says that either we bury Blinky or someone else will have to keep him in their house. <laughs> Take that up at the next meeting. Blinky ought to last another week. Okay, but can I move him from under my pillow? <laughs> if you want to. Is there any more new business? Now we come to one of the most important moments in the entire history of our club. Our first guest speaker. We are honored to have with us this evening... The greatest fullback that Yale ever had. <laughs> the first man to swim the English Channel. <laughs> and the man who in 1943 recaptured Guadalcanal. <laughs> <clears throat> Mr. Jack Benny. Mr. President. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, and fellow beavers. I... I have given a lot of thought to the subject of my talk tonight. And finally, I have selected a topic which should be near and dear to all our hearts. I'm going to speak to you tonight on thrift. Friends, thrift is one of the greatest virtues and should be started when you're young. Here, here. As you go through life, you'll hear many proverbs. One of the most important is, a penny saved is a penny earned. Now, it's true that when you practice thrift, some people may ridicule you. They call you miser, cheapskate, or tightwad. Here, here. <laughs> huh? Oh, oh, pardon. <laughs> but don't let that bother you. It never bothered me. <laughs> so do not underestimate the importance of saving. Of course, it can be overdone. And one should remember that there are some things more important than money. Now, are there any other questions? Yes, Stevie? Mr. Benny, you said it's important to start saving money at an early age. How old were you when you started saving? Stevie, I was just a little boy. I'd save a penny here, a piece of wampum there. <laughs> it's amazing how it mounts up. Any other questions? Yes, Joey. Mr. Benny, how can we raise more money for our club? Well, boys, if you want to increase your treasury, you must get more members. Oh, gee, we've got every fellow our age in this neighborhood. That is everyone but Roger Lowell. Roger Lowell? Yeah, he's the kid who lives in the great big house in the, on the corner with all the servants. Oh, those Lowells. Yeah, his family is the wealthiest in town. Yeah. All Roger does is sit home all by himself, playing with his electric trains and chemical set and bicycle and television set and microscope and erector set. Gee, isn't he lonely? Lonely, but loaded. <laughs> Oh. 
Well, fellow beavers, if there are no further questions, that will conclude my talk, and it was a great pleasure to be here. Thank you, Mr. Benny. And before you go, we'd like to give you our club cheer. Come on, boys. One, two, three. For he's a jolly good beaver. For he's a jolly good beaver. For he's a jolly good beaver. He helped us build our dam. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, fellas. I'll leave you now and let you conduct the rest of the meeting by yourselves. So long. Goodbye, Goodbye Beaver Benny. Benny. <laughs> He's a nice fellow. He sure is. Yeah, but when's he gonna pay his dues? <laughs> oh, oh, fellas, I forgot something. My hat. Here it is. Goodbye, boys. For I'm a jolly good beaver. For I'm a jolly good beaver. For I'm a jolly good beaver. And I'm losing all my fur. <laughs> Be sure to listen to this program next week when we'll have three guest stars. Three guest stars? Yes, Ronald Coleman, Benita Coleman, and little Oscar Coleman. with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, let's go out to Jack Benny's house in Beverly Hills where we find... Hmm, must be something wrong here. Oh, well, that's what it says. Where we find Jack down on his knees scrubbing the kitchen floor. <laughs> hmm, I didn't know a floor could get this dirty. Well, anyway, the floor scrubbed. What a job. Now, let's see, what else is on that list of things I have to do? Oh, yes, I've already dusted the bedroom, turned the mattresses, changed the linen on the bed, did the dishes, washed the... Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is right, yes, sir. I just finished 18 holes of golf. <laughs> oh, you did, eh? Yeah. Did you wash the living room windows? Yes, yes. Did you put out the garbage? It's out, it's out. Did you scrub the kitchen floor? I just did that. Good. Uh, when will dinner be ready? <laughs> Seven o'clock, and it's the last time I'll play gin rummy with you. <laughs> Goodbye. One game of gin rummy, and I have to do all the housework. I got to do it tomorrow, too. He blitzed me. <laughs> Gosh, am I tired. Scrubbing that floor was quite a job. When I take my bubble bath tonight, I mustn't forget to put some jergens on my knees. <laughs> Let's see. Now, before I take off this apron and dust cap, I better... No, oh, there's the door buzzer. Oh, I beg your pardon, miss, but I guess I have the wrong... Dennis, it's me. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. See, you look cute in that apron. I'm not trying to look cute. I was down scrubbing the floor, and it wasn't easy. I'll pull up my pants leg and show you. There, look at my knees. <whistles> now, cut that out! <laughs> then come in. All right, but there's a package addressed to you lying out on the walk. There is? Why don't they deliver those things to the door? I'll go out and get it. <whistles> Dennis! It wasn't me. It was that man across the street. <laughs> What? You forgot to roll down your pants leg. Oh, yes. Hmm, they are kind of nice, aren't they? <laughs> if I can get a little more tan, I can go without stocking. <laughs> oh, well. A pretty girl is like a melody. Dum, dum, bum, bum, bum. Here, kid, hold the package while I get my glasses. Dennis, what are you doing? I open the package. Gee, look at the picture script from Warner Brothers. 
Well, thank goodness. I've been waiting for it all week. And there's a letter with it from Harry Warner. A letter from Harry Warner? What does he say? He says, Dear Jack, enclose fine script and contract for your next picture as agreed upon. And it's the last time I'll play gin rummy with you. <laughs> hmm. What does that mean, Mr. Benny? Nothing, nothing. Now, kid, what'd you drop over for? Well, Mr. Benny, I want to ask you something very personal. Personal? What is it? But just a second while I close the door. All right, kid, what is it? Is anybody else at home? No, no, we're all alone. What is it you want to know? Wait till I close the window. <laughs> all right, Dennis, all right. What is it? Mr. Benny. Yes? Are you the walking man? <laughs> Dennis, Dennis, come here a minute. Huh? Let me feel your head. <laughs> no, the other one. <laughs> now, look, kid, I want to go over this script that Warner Brothers sent me. So excuse me a minute. Hmm, it's a Western. Good title, too. Bad Man of Bullock's Basement. <laughs> Scene one. Fade in on Ranch House. As the moon comes up in the east, the sagebrush casts weird shadows across black... Buzzard goes. Before you get too interested in that script, wouldn't you like to hear the song I prepared for the program? Oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, right? Sing it. I can listen to you and read at the same time. Okay. The horses are better down for the night than suddenly a shot is heard in the distance. Come here, you vomit. One more shot out of you, and I'll thrash you within an inch of your life. But, gee, I sang as good as I could. Huh? Oh, oh, pardon me, kid. I, while you were singing, I was reading the script. Oh. It's a western, you know, and I guess I got carried away. I know. You rode me piggyback through the last half of the chorus. <laughs> I'm sorry, kid. Well, then get off. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know, kid, your pockets make nice stirrups there. Anyway, this is the best story. I... Somebody came in. Rochester, is that you coming back? It ain't General McArthur. <laughs> well, it's about time. Hey, what's that you're reading, boss? It's a script from Warner Brothers, and it looks great. Gee, if I'd have made this picture last year, I would have won the Academy Award instead of Ronald Coleman. If you'd have made it in that dust cap and apron, you'd have won it instead of Loretta Young. <laughs> never mind. You know, boss, I wish you would win an Academy Award sometime. I've never seen an Oscar. You haven't? Well, Rochester, your wish may come true, because if I make this picture, I'm a cinch to win it. And maybe if you had someone with you in a supporting role, it might help. Well, a good supporting actor does add something, uh... Who did you have in mind, Dennis? Ronald Coleman. <laughs> Ronald in my picture? Hey, that's a pretty good idea. I mean, now that he won the award, he certainly is worthy of the opportunity. <laughs> you know, I may go next door and speak to Mr. Coleman about it. I wonder if he's home. <laughs> In the library, Benita. You know, maybe I haven't told you this before, but it's very nice being here, alone together, away from the crowd. Ronnie, stop talking to that Oscar and pay some attention to me. <laughs> I'm sorry, dear. Ah, but you were thrilled winning it, weren't you? Well, you know, it's hard to describe exactly how it feels. There I sat in the Shrine Auditorium, one person among an audience of 6,200 people, and then they called my name. As I walked to the stage, my entire career flashed before my eyes. From the time I made my first appearance in London many years ago, as a banjo player. <laughs> No, you ever played the banjo? Oh, yes, yes. I plunked a mean fling. <laughs> I used to be billed as the London Eddie Peabody. <laughs> and then I packed my belongings, took my banjo along, and came to America. Here I was billed as England's answer to Frank Remley. <laughs> Those were the things I kept thinking of during the Academy ceremonies. And I've no actual recollection of them presenting me with the Oscar. Well, you certainly were the most excited person on the stage. I excited? 
Was it noticeable? Oh, very. Especially when he went over to congratulate the other award winners. Why, what did I do? You slapped Loretta Young on the back and kissed Daryl Zanuck. <laughs> no. <laughs> and you greeted everyone. You even shook hands with Jack Benny. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to. He stuck his arm through Gregory Peck's sleeve. <laughs> Anyway, darling, I wish we could have just one evening at home without mentioning Jack Benny. Oh, darling, why do you dislike him so? He means well, and he does try to be helpful. But only this morning he was walking around our yard helping our gardener. He wasn't helping. He was looking for Easter eggs. <laughs> Wearing that bunny suit, yes. <laughs> I aimed a kick and just missed his cottontail. <laughs> Why we move next door to him, I'll never know. Ah, but we have such a beautiful home. Yes, but other people have beautiful homes, too. They can look out of their windows and see rolling green hills. Or the lights of the city spread out like a carpet of jewels. Or the golden sun setting on the Pacific. I look out of my window and see Jack Benny luxing his undies. saw yesterday were yours. Oh. Yes. yes, well, he did them rather well. <laughs> yeah, but why doesn't he stick to the laundry business instead of going on the radio? Surrounding himself with all those characters. Oh, darling. Mary Livingston's such a nice girl. Oh, I don't mean Mary. I'm talking about the others. Take that Phil Harris fellow. <laughs> now, the way he conducted himself at the party after the Academy Awards. Oh, I didn't see him there. Well, very few people did. As soon as he arrived, he got a bottle, went off in the corner, and just sat there. Wasn't he lonely? Lonely, but loaded. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think... Oh, Benita, look. Look out this window. Isn't that Phil Harris now? Where? He's walking towards Benny's house. Oh, yes. This is strange. I thought he was younger than that. He's carrying a cane. No, no, darling. That, that's a pool cue. <laughs> but just look at the way he swaggers when he walks. I wonder if I can reach the doorbell from out here on the sidewalk. Better chalk up first. <laughs> Boss, there's nobody here but a long finger. It's me, Rot. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Phil. Phil, what's the idea of walking through the streets with a pool cue? I want to. See what's engraved on the handle? Where? Right there. <laughs> this pool cue was presented to Phil Harris for outstanding achievement in furthering the art of snooker. <laughs> Well, isn't that wonderful, winning a pool cue? Yeah, and if I hadn't scratched my last shot, I would have won the engraved cuspidor. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Sure it is. I already bought a toilet for it. <laughs> you know, Phil, sometimes I wonder why I put up with you. Why a star of my magnitude, a man of my dignity, a person who holds such a stellar place in society, should condescend to continue such a lowly association. Well, hoy, tea, toy. <laughs> Hey, let me ask you something, Jackson. What have you got to be so stuck up about? Well... Show me your knees. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Phil, the point I'm trying to make is that you're content to go along day after day in the same old rut. But not me. I'm progressing. In fact, right now, I'm thinking of making a picture with Ronald Coleman. So, if you I You in get... a picture with Ronald Coleman? Ha, ha, ha. You better chalk up and shoot again, Dad. <laughs> What? And keep one foot on the floor. <laughs> well, I'm serious. What's so surprising about me and Ronald Coleman being in the same picture? Yeah, what's so surprising about it? After all, Mr. Benny was the star of Random Harvest. What? He has it embroidered on his underwear. <laughs> Dennis, those aren't mine. <laughs> anyway, Phil, whether you believe it or not, I'm going over to Ronald Coleman right... I'm going over to see him right now. Now, where's my picture script? Oh, here it is. Oh, good evening, Sherwood. Oh, good evening, Mr. Benny. Is Mr. Coleman at home? Yes, come in. Uh, may I take your hat, sir? There you are. Uh, your coat? 
Thank you. Your apron? What? Oh, oh. Oh, my goodness. I forgot to take it off. Uh, will you tell Mr. Coleman that I'm here? Uh, very well. Oh, Mr. Coleman. Yes, Sherbert? Uh, forgive me, sir, but Cottontail Benny is here. <laughs> No, no. Send him away. Tell him we're not at home. Well, wait a minute, darling. Maybe Jack's just trying to be neighborly. He, he probably wants to congratulate you on winning the Academy Award. Well. Yes. Show Mr. Benny in, Sherwood. Uh, yes, ma'am. I, I just thought of sporting of him. After all, he must have been a bit hurt when we didn't go over and congratulate him on being the walking man. You know, for eight long weeks, he just walked around in a circle. <laughs> yeah, too bad he didn't straighten it out. He'd be in Chicago by now. <laughs> Anyway, I, I still feel that this is a trick. He's over here to borrow something. Oh, why do you always suspect that, Ronnie? Well, he already has my electric shaver, portable radio, phonograph, bridge lamp, cocktail shaker, electric blanket, fountain pen, tuxedo, and Wednesday night was the last straw. Why? What happened? He told me he was going to the Palladium, his girlfriend had to work, and he wanted to borrow you. <laughs> why didn't you tell me? I haven't done the shimmy in years. <laughs> Now, Benita. Here he comes. Hello, Benita. Hiya, Ronnie. Long time no see. Oh. Hello, Jack. You're right, Jack. I haven't seen you since the dinner party last Saturday night. Yes. Well, that a wonderful dinner. Too bad you couldn't have been at my table. Oh, that's all right, Jack. The man we had served beautifully. <laughs> well, by the way, Ronnie... I didn't get a chance to talk to you Saturday night, so I just came over to congratulate you on winning the Academy Award. Thank you, Jack. Good night. Huh? <laughs> oh, well, he, he just meant it was a good night to so have won the award. Oh, 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 oh I see. <laughs> well, Ronnie, the real reason I came over here is to offer you a part in a movie that I'm going to make for Warner Brothers. You're making a movie, and you have a part for me? That's right, and it's something you've never done before. I'm sure. <laughs> You know, it's a Western. It's a Western, Ronnie, and you'll play a cowboy. Me? A cowboy? Yeah, I, I brought along the script so you could read a few lines, just to see how you like it. Oh, uh, look, Jack, I have no intention Ronnie, of... why don't you read it? It might be a grand opportunity. Oh, well, all right. Good. Now, Benita, will you do me a favor and read the feminine lead with oh, Ronnie? Oh, no, wait a minute, Jack. I mean, I don't... Now, now, Benita, read why don't you read it? It may be a grand opportunity. <laughs> all right, I will. Good. Now, start reading on page three where you two meet for the first time. Now, go ahead, Ronnie. Remember, you're a cowboy. Shucks, ma'am, I sure am. Plum sorry, I killed that hombre. I reckon I didn't reckon he was your paw. I reckon. Well, you sure plug poor paw. But even though he's gone, I reckon he'll be happy to know you're apologizing for an honest mistake. Uh, I reckon. A, a little more feeling, Benita, then. <laughs> Jacks, Missy, ma'am. I sure feel like an ordinary coyote for a shooting your kinfolk. Uh, uh, bow your legs a little there, will you? <laughs> yeah, poor sure looks Strange line there, the tumbleweed. <laughs> the cold and the day. Now, now, this is your big speech, Ronnie, so be very, very tender. Wait a minute, little lady. Don't say dade. The cowboy is never dade. Just say he's traveled onward. Up to that big corral up yonder in the sky. Where all you can hear is the harps of the angels. And the singing of the sons of the pioneers. <laughs> Heavens, what was that? Me, I'm playing the part of your horse. <laughs> oh, good. The scene where you break your leg and I have to shoot you? <laughs> I'm sorry, Jack, but this part isn't for me. Well, okay, Ronnie. I was just trying to do you a favor, you know. It's your career. But when the picture comes out and it's a big hit, remember, I offered you the part before I took it to Gabby Hayes. <laughs> Anyway, back to your decision. I'll be running along. Good night, Ronnie. Good night, Benita. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks for uh, nice of you to think of me. Well, I always like to help. Hey, wait a minute. Ronnie, is that your Oscar on the table with the floodlights on it? <laughs> yes. 
say, do you mind if I look at it? Well, gosh, it's really beautiful. You know, Rochester, my butler, has never seen an Oscar. Would it be all right if I borrowed it for a little while? <laughs> well, uh, oh, all right, Jack. Go ahead and take it. Gee, thanks. Darling, why did you agree to let him take the Oscar home? Might as well be with the rest of my things. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, nothing, nothing. Oh. Well, Ronnie, it's awfully nice of you. Thanks a lot. I'll just wrap the Oscar in this copy of tonight's newspaper. I haven't read it yet. But... <laughs> Well, good night. Good, good night. night. He was nice him to let me take the Oscar so I could show it to Rochester. I must have stayed there longer than I thought. So dark out. No moon. Oh, well. Hello, kitty. Hey, kitty, 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 kitty. Darn it, she got away. She'd have made a wonderful A string. <laughs> hey, Bud. Bud. Huh? Got a match? Match? Yes, I have one right here. Don't make a move. This is a stick up. What? You heard me. Mister. Mister, put down that gun. Shut up. Now, come on. Your money or your life? <laughs> Look, bud. I said your money or your life. I'm thinking it over. <laughs> now, mister... Shut up and give me your wallet. And I'll take that package you're holding, too. No, no, mister, don't take that package. It isn't mine. It belongs to Ronald Coleman. Shut up. But, mister, please. Hey, this looks like gold. I'll melt it down. But it isn't mine. I have to return it. Pipe down. And lay down on the sidewalk, face down, and count to a hundred. Look, mister, can't we... Go on. Don't make a move or I'll let you have it. Okay, okay. Down on your face and start counting. Yes, sir. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... Ten. Go away, Kitty. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Kitty, stop licking my face. I got enough trouble. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Kitty, go away from here. Nineteen, twenty. What will I tell Ronnie? Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, one hundred. Help! Help, please! Police! Will Jack Benny recover the stolen Oscar? Will Ronald Coleman sue him? Will Bing Crosby be our guest next week? Tune in and find out! <laughs>